Welcome everybody to the debut episode of the Film Snobcast. This is, of course, your snob in chief, William, along with my incessantly quirky co-host. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Shay Simone. How you doing? If, if you don't know know her by now, you're obviously not paying attention. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna we got a couple different things we want to talk about here. And the first of that is gonna be just a few days ago, am I right? Just a few days ago. The Oscar nominations came out for the 92nd annual Oscars. 92 years of not nominating people of color. Unbelievable. Yeah, they make Yay. a lot of mistakes, right? Yay, Green Ma- green Book. No, yeah, I was going to say, if the Green, the green Mile <laughs> had won anything, that probably would have been a good idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about last year's Sundance Film Festival, what we learned, things we enjoyed, and, and kind of what we want to see this year, right? Mm-hmm. So without further ado, I guess we should just get started then. Let's, Let's do that. Do it. All right, so what's the first uh, category you've got there for our Oscar discussion? Uh, cool. Okay. Visual effects. I like to call this the film. This the, the films that usually get nominated here are the ones that people think are good but are not actually good. Suicide Squad. Squad. That won best costume though. That was like Hello makeup. For the crocodile. Yeah, it won like makeup <laughs> for the crocodile. Uh, so for visual effects. Celebrity. Yes, exactly. So for visual effects, we have. Avengers Endgame. You have to say it like that, though. That doesn't count. The Irishman. 1917. The Lion King. <laughs> and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Who you got? Who do I think is going to win? Y- yeah. Think? Who do you think and what do you think? Um, like, who do you want okay. to win and what do you think is going to win? You know, I think it's kind of funny that visual effects The Lion King is nominated, but um, I guess we'll find out later if, if it's nominated. It's in animated. It is in animated? It's in animated, yeah. So if it's in animation, then why would it be in visual effects, do you think? I mean, I know there are visual effects in it, but it's also supposed to be, you know, an animation. So I'm going to follow my mom's advice, and if I don't have anything nice to say, I'm just going to go ahead and say nothing about that. I do have something not nice to say. Lion King, not anatomically correct. But the problem is, Zero out of ten. The, the, the problem is, even though it, if it, even if it was anatomically correct, the fact that they don't blink or emote makes any of the emotion the film had just kind of just Which I guess vacuum is, out. You know, it's it's appropriate for it being a heartless cash grab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Aladdin. As you can tell, this this podcast is not paid for by Disney. <laughs> we are not being monetized. <laughs> and even if we <laughs> were, it wouldn't be by the mouse. I'll tell you that right now, mm-hmm. sons of bitches. If you think that's bad, wait till we start talking about Star Wars, which I think, by the way, is the weakest Star Wars film since Episode Two. Yeah bother watching it that's okay you're not a star wars fan as far as i know yes um i used to be you know i grew up with the original movies i even grew up with the prequels um it was fine i like the originals of course in force awakens i actually didn't mind i liked it um but uh what was it the last jedi or something is that what it it was called? that is what it's called i actually really liked the last jedi i did not i wanted to like it but i was like what did i just witness well, if you stay tuned to the website, you're going to see I'm writing an article right now about why this piece of shit, Rise of Skywalker, vindicates Ryan Johnson. So what are you picking for visual effects, Jay? <sighs> well, to be honest, I haven't seen any of these movies. <laughs> you heard her. She did not see uh, the movie that made $3 billion, Avengers Endgame. Because I don't really care. Other people care, and that's cool. My, I have many problems with Avengers Endgame. The visual effects aren't one of them. Uh, I think... Ultimately, though, this is just going to be the Irishman. I do have a question, though. What visual effects were in the Irishman? I'm confused. They, they made 79-year-old Robert De Niro look like he was only 59 years old, oh. even though he was supposed to be 35. Netflix literally cleaned up at these Academy Awards. And as we go through the awards, you'll see that the Irishman— Jeff s- Bridges. Right? Tron Legacy. Is that you? Exactly my point. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, it looks like him if someone did a really nice digital painting. Right. <laughs> I mean, he definitely looks less wrinkly, but it just looks like, you know, Facetune. Like less wrinkly Facetune. Yeah. <laughs> so who are you uh, picking out of those five nominees that you have not seen? Um, this is so hard. <laughs> I, don't I like, know. Um, For the shits and giggles, the Irishman, because I, I like my De Niro and I like my Pacino. I'm going to go with the mouse buying this award, so Lion King. Either – okay, so I think Endgame is going to win Yeah. because everyone sucks Marvel's dick. 
They do. It's true. Uh, Even though Marvel does suck dick. The Lion King could also win because a lot of people, not as many as Marvel, but a lot of people do also still suck Disney's dick. They really do. The guy's been dead since 19, what, 63? Still <laughs> sucking his dick? I mean, he's not dead. He's cryogenically frozen. Just his head. The rest of him's gone. <laughs> his head's still there. It's just the rest of his body <laughs> is gonna, just gone. Find a bodybuilder. And, like, they're going to buy a bodybuilder through the black market, kill him, and then sever his head off, and then put Disney on. Now, this is going to be this is gonna be like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like Krang. He's just going to be in the <laughs> middle of a tummy, yelling, Ooh, yelling, yelling anti-Semitic Krang. things at people. Honestly, I think I would love it if Disney came back to life, for real. It would be so interesting. That would be so hilarious. He'd be like, what the fuck is going on? What have you done to my company, you bastards? Yeah. Why What's are there- with all these gay characters? Is that a black person? <laughs> is that a Mexican? Are we in Mexico? <laughs> this is exactly how it would go down. So we've decided we'll just make a consensus that Avengers Endgame is probably going to win. Agreed. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, costume design, we've got... The Irishman uh, by Sandy Powell and Christopher Peterson. Jojo Rabbit, Maze C. Rubio. Joker, Mark Bridges. Little Women, Jacqueline Duran. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, A. Ad- a Ariane oh, yeah. Phillips. I almost said So, Phillips. here's the thing. Mm. I think Jojo Rabbit's brilliant. It has no chance at winning this award because it's literally all Nazi costumes from the 40s. I was going to say, like, I think Jojo Rabbit would have a good chance because, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's a period piece. Let me tell you why Little Women, a period piece, is going to win. Mm-hmm. Because it's a period piece. <laughs> but so is, so is Jojo Rabbit in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right, but this one's in the eight, like 19th century. 19th century biopic, mm. always win over 20th century biopic in costume design. Why? Okay, so I have a question. Why is Joker nominated? It's just like normal people. I don't know. Huh. You'd have to talk to like one of the 8,000 members of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences. I think they all just really like Joker so much. They were like, give let's, all the noms. Fuck it, let's just give it them all. Wouldn't it be funny, though, if they were like, what if this was all like planned? It, do they plan it ahead of time? Like, do they already know who's gonna win how does that work i can't speak on that because like what if they were like okay we'll give joker a bunch of nominations but then joker doesn't win anything oh you mean like they did the la la land Mm -hmm. bastards (laughs) yeah yeah what what if that's the case like we're just gonna give him a bunch of nominations to you know kind of balance it out it's one of those things you can't really you can't really tell what they're gonna do Mm. so if you had to pick who do you want to win and who do you think is gonna win this category um who do I want to win? I would want Jojo Rabbit to yeah. win, I think. Because mm-hmm. uh, to me personally, um, that costume design would be the most interesting, how they handle the period piece, but then also make it like in the genre at the same time. Anyone who's seen the movie knows that if this movie with Jojo Rabbit wins, it will be solely for Sam Rockwell's final costume. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, maybe like what you said, Little Women. yeah has a high chance of winning but so far i think we can tell that the nominations are really weak right now because we're all just like hey, and here's the thing why I don't, is this nominated i don't think they're weak it's just they're all kind of the same thing yeah. all of these outside even joker's technically a period piece yeah you're right because it takes place in the early <laughs> 80s these are all period pieces mm-hmm. costume design is notorious for period pieces um outside of last year when i think uh black panther won which mm. was weird. It was interesting. Like, oh, your CGI. You I mean wasn't he, crazy about it. He won costume design, even though his CGI costume is a costume. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. It's. I'm. I'm saying Little Women's gonna win. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that would be the consensus here? Yes. Okay. I would like JoJo to win, though. That'd be cool. I wouldn't be against it, but I just think that Little Women's gonna be. They're just. It's an apology for like. I'm sorry, Greta. We're oh. sorry. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> Next and, is uh, makeup and hair. So to start, we have bombshell. Joker. Judy. Judy. Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. And 1917. I uh, I want Maleficent. So I think Maleficent's, Maleficent's going to win. So I think Bombshell's going to win. Why? They literally made Charlize Theron look like Megyn Kelly. I mean, yeah, that was pretty cool. She, it, it's definitely transformative, but Charlize Theron is also just that kind of actress where she has to be 
yeah kind of transformative but she, here's the thing and it's the same argument with monster you could put makeup on there all day mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if even if she has no makeup on mm -hmm. her performance is going to be good exactly yeah. so i think that the makeup enhanced that yeah and making john lithgow look like roger ailes who looks like jabba the hut <laughs> without a tan <laughs> Um, I think that was a great job too. I just saw this movie and I th uh, I thought to myself, man, this thing's probably gonna win makeup and hair. But uh, you think Maleficent? Why? Um, just because out of the pool we have here, yeah. it just seems to be like the most, out like it's the outlier. It's mm -hmm. the most creative and fantastical, and uh, I think they they definitely have a lot more room to play with the uh, just the different looks and stuff. Kind of like I'm surprised it got. Nominated for makeup and hair, not costume design. If Maleficent is being nominated in anything at all. But, uh, yeah. I think people just really get to stretch their wings more since it's in the fantasy drama. So, I'm just going to go with that. I, I think so, too. But I also think that a lot of her, um, the stuff that we see on that movie is CGI. Eh. But, again, poor Every, Disney. Everything's CGI. We're living it's in true. a simulation. The Matrix. Welcome to the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, so consensus is this is a split between us, Bombshell and Maleficent. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. One of us will be right. It will be me. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have original song, which we have I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away by Toys from Toy Story 4. I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough. Into the Unknown, Frozen 2. And Stand Up from Harriet, which I did not see. Mm. And neither did anyone else. Oh, yeah, you, so you haven't seen the new Frozen movie, have you? <laughs> no, thank you. Ne neither have I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Melissa saw that one. She gave it a good review. Yes, she did, and thank you, Melissa, uh, for putting up with that. Love you, girl. Yeah, thank you for putting up that. <laughs> uh, I didn't see it. I don't want to see it. I'm not a 10-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. I enjoyed it. the first one. Like, it was good. Should I just let it go? What? Oh, shit fell right into that so i think that the winner is going to be Ro the song from rocket man it won the golden globe and it's the only song i've heard um i think it's going to be either rocket man or frozen 2 just because everyone sucks frozen 2's dick and i think <laughs> i think this might i think you're you might be right because it might be a makeup for not nominating it for best animated feature mm. which i don't think it got a nomination for but we'll go into that in a minute interesting so interesting. uh if i had to pick one i'm gonna go with i'm never gonna i'm gonna love me again just because i think they want elton john on that stage mm-hmm I'm choosing Frozen 2 because politics. I've never actually even heard the song. That's a, that's a fair <laughs> split. That's a fair split. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have original score, and we have Joker, Hildur Gunnator. Gunnator. It's a Gunnator. I don't know. I don't speak Icelandic. Neither do I. Little Women. Oh, by Alexander Desplat. Uh, yeah. he's. Like by the way, that score is awesome. Mm. Uh, Marriage Story from Randy Newman. Really? Yes, it's a great score. 1917 by your boy, Thomas Newman. Not Randy, not related to Randy in any way. Yeah. Uh, and of course, of course, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker by the GOAT, John Williams. Denied. It's going to be Hilder's Award. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I really like the score for Joker. That score from Joker is as sinister as the Joker himself, and it's so I thought, well done. I thought it, yeah, I thought it was really lovely, and I, um, I didn't know it was Hilder's making until i don't know finally looking at the nominations i guess but um i was like yeah that makes there's sense there's a really cool story from todd phillips about that uh that scene where he's in the bathroom the mm -hmm. joker apparently that day they didn't have anything planned for that bathroom scene yeah so he just played some of the hilder's score mm. and joaquin just started doing that weird dance that's awesome and that's what they got you really get that sense like i don't know it's it's very moody. And I it's think very that's, atmospheric. Uh, as, as much as people don't like Todd Phillips and his direction of the movie, I think that stuff like that is why having a comedy director like Todd Phillips direct this movie made it feel so mm -hmm. organic, mm -hmm. I guess would be the word. Melancholic. Yeah. The, well, the melancholy was going to be there with the script. But yeah, I think he really just went head first into it. Yeah. So I think we both agree. Hilder is going to yes. win this thing. Yes. Yeah. Original score seems pretty as much, much as I bag. love Alexander Desplat. I, I really like, and I really like that that score too. Actually, I just I'm watching Little Women today. I just watched mm -hmm. it, and that score is great. And Alexandre Plaza is great. Yeah. Uh, production design. We have The Irishman by Bob Shaw and Regina Graves. No, her voice didn't crack. That was her Irish accent. <laughs> Jojo Rabbit by Rob Vincent and Nora uh, Sopkova. 1917 by Dennis Kastner and Lisa Dales. 
Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Barbara Ling, Nancy Haig. And Parasite, Lee Ha-joon and Cho Wang-woo and Han Ga-ram and Cho Hee. She's struggling yeah. on that. She's struggling on those Korean names. <laughs> I, I tried my best. I tried so, my best. So for anybody who's seen any of these movies, I can tell you one thing. Uh, Parasite's production design is – how do I put this? Ooh. Stellar. Ooh. It is stellar. Every single step in the movie, the production design seems more and more intent on getting you to buy into what they're selling. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I think again, 1917's gimmick kind of lends itself to production design mm-hmm. being a damn nightmare. Yeah. Um, for something like that, where like if the timing isn't exactly right on that cannon fire, mm-hmm. gotta redo it. Yeah. And that's three hours of shooting. Squids. Just gone. Um, uh, I'm gonna go with Parasite because I just think it's so good. Interesting. Hmm. I'm torn because I haven't even seen any of these except for Once Upon a Time. And I think even uh, the production design in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was really cool. Oh, yeah. They reverted Hollywood back to um, that era. That and, late um, 60s, early 70s. And it was definitely, like, super, uh, super, what do you call it? Specific? Super uh, specific, yeah. I liked it. Um, I, I just think that, that there's a particular scene with a particular fruit in Parasite that if that mm. production design is not as extraordinary as it is, it doesn't work. Okay, so what do you think is going to win? Um, I think that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is going to win, but mm. I want Parasite to win. Okay. I think uh, 1917 is going to win. Mm. But I think uh, either 1917 or Once Upon a Time. Um, but I'd like Jojo Rabbit or Parasite. So we'll go with something. Once Upon a Time to win because you also think it's going to win, and that's what I think. Mm-hmm. So that'll be our pick there. Yeah. Uh, now we have sound mixing. Woohoo. Uh, so <laughs> she says that, but how important is sound mixing? Very it's important. Ordinarily. Very important. It's just interesting that they give Oscars for it. I don't know. Well, I, mean, I just find it interesting. Anything that you can do in a movie, you better do it well enough. And exactly. If you do it well enough, you deserve it. That goes for every you know? department. But, yeah. So sound mixing, we have Ad Astra. Ford v. Ferrari. Joker. 1917. And once again, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Give them all the Oscars. I just think that 1917 <laughs> is a war movie, and war movies do well in the sound categories. That's very true. Because you have to do it a certain way, and you have to offer a very specific kind of sound in order to get that effectiveness. In order, like, you have to be like really gritty with it, and you can't, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, you, you have all these really big sounds, and it has to be really overwhelming and stuff. There has to be an auditory displacement mm-hmm. in the mix that the sound mixer has to understand when when he takes that footage, um, whether it's fully or in camera, and be able to put that all together to make you feel. Mm-hmm. And in this case, it, the, it's World War One, so it's all trench warfare. It's all gu- bayonets and cannonballs. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be, like you said, gritty and gross and mud yeah. and blood and that mix has to kind of sound like that it can't be pristine thx mm-hmm. sound it has to have a personality to it yeah and i think that's why 1917 is gonna win. yeah it's also well it's also a suspension of belief too like if you hear like even one like wilhelm for example that would pretty much ruin the whole experience you that's know right. the only wilhelm we want in world war one is the kaiser <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going for 1917 across the board. Yeah. Yep. I think sound editing, we have Ford v. Ferrari. Oh, sound editing. Okay, I was like, wait, we just did that. We got fo- <laughs> Ford v. Ferrari. Joker. 1917. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I'm noticing a pattern here. Yeah, all the same movies again. We're, we keep repeating the same movies. Yeah. That's oh, fun. Yeah. It's like Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, in 1917. They are the three highest vote-getting movies, 11, 10, and 10, respectively. Mm-hmm. Nominees. Yeah. Sound editing. Um, I guess I'll just go with 1917. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Um, but you'll notice 1917 doesn't have any acting nominations when I get there. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, we have very important, and I think the most important step of any ma- mm-hmm. movie-making experience. Mm-hmm. Film editing, we have Ford v. Ferrari, Michael McCusker, and Andrew Buckland. The Irishman, Thelma Schoonmacher. That's, she's a legend, actually. Jojo Rabbit, Tom Eagle. Joker, Jeff Groff. And Parasite, Jean Moyan. Um, I don't know what to say about this. I think they're going to give it to Schoonmacher because she made a three-hour and 40-minute f- movie feel like two hours and a half. Yeah. 
I'm cool with that. She's I'm fine with that. She's a legend. She's already got three Oscars for Saving Lemon. She's great. Yeah. So I'm good with the Irishman or Jojo Rabbit because I know that Taika Waititi is also like very uh very ardent about how his films are edited. edited yeah. So. It's, it, that, that goes all the way back to what was it? Uh, Eagle versus Shark. Yeah. Which is such. It's such. A I cool need to movie. see that so bad. It looks so Netflix adorable. Movie. I saw a music video that it was edited to, and it was the cutest shit. If ever. you guys haven't seen Eagle vs. Shark, it's on, I believe, Netflix or Amazon. Go check it, it out. It's great. Yeah, it's on a streaming service. I just don't know. I don't remember which one right now. I don't have it in front of me. But why is Joker nominated <laughs> for film editing? Here. Uh, I, I asked the same question when Bohemian Rhapsody got one last year. Ooh. And that film's way better editing than uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, everything's better than that movie. Uh, <laughs> the next one is one of my favorite categories. Best International Feature Film. We have Corpus Christi, uh, Jean Comasa. Honeyland, Tamara Kovacs, okay. and Lubos Stefanov. Uh, the uh, Lubos Stefanov. Stefanov. Then we have Les Miserables, uh, Large Lee. Pain and Glory, Pedro Almodovar. And of course, um, Parasite, Almodovar. Bong Joon-ho. Yeah, that's that. Sorry, Pedro. Um, Mo- um, Almodovar. I always want to say it the other way. Almodovar. There you go. I can't say things. It's okay. Uh, it, this is a one-horse race, and that horse belongs to the South Korean and our uh, nomination mm-hmm. here. Uh, Parasite. It's one of the best movies of the year, and it's the best movie in a very, very stacked category. Mm-hmm. This, the, 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 these five movies, I've seen four of these five movies. I haven't seen Pain and Glory yet. Oh. Um, the other mm-hmm. ones I haven't s- that I have seen are all brilliant, though. Uh, I have a question for you. What do you think about Pedro Almodovar's filmmaking? He's a genius, man. I like what I like about him is he hides his edit like it's so subtle, mm-hmm. his hand and his directing is so subtle, and so uh, what I'm looking for in Pain and Glory since it's a more personal story is I'm looking for a little bit more of a referee, yeah, around the edges story from him, yeah. Um, I know that this is a very personal story for him, so I want to see if he can kind of fluff it up and give it a bit of a grind because everything mm-hmm. that he does has this sort of European charm to it. It does. You know, it's kind of glossy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even what's it? What is it? Um, the one he did with Brad Pitt, uh, uh, the skin I'm in. Oh, yeah. that's like one of the ones that I haven't seen. Yeah, it's, it's the it's skin I live cool. in. Yeah, I it's think. pretty cool. Yeah, um, so uh, Parasite across the board. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we're skipping the short films. I haven't seen any of them. Me neither. <laughs> um, I'm waiting yeah, for the yeah. shorts to come out, so I'll see. Them I now. haven't seen any of them. It's true. Okay, best documentary feature. Next, we have the documentary features. We have American Factory, Julia Reichert, and Stephen Bogner. The Cave, Faraz Bayad. The Edge of Democracy, Petra Costa. For Sama, Wahad Al Khadib, and Edward Fox. There you go. Then we have Honeyland, Tamara Kitsova, and Lucio Stefano. Uh, it's going to be For Sama. Okay. It's, it's, it's so good. <laughs> cool. For Sama is so good. It, it, it's about it's a story of a, a mother trying to escape Aleppo. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, this is a category where I'm going to mm. have very diametrically different opinions on what I think is going to win and what I want to win. Okay. Uh, it's best cinematography. What do we have here? The Irishman, Rodrigo Prieto. Joker, Lauren Sure. The Lighthouse, Yarin Blash. Yarin Blaschke. 1917, Roger Deakins. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Robert Richardson. So, what do you think is going to win? <sighs> is it going to be the one trick pony? Are you, is, is that what you're calling Roger? Yeah, that's what I'm calling Roger. <laughs> De- I'm calling that movie a one oh. trick pony because it has one trick and it's the whole movie. Okay. Am, um, I, wrong? Am I wrong there? Hmm. Cinematography. I'm kind of, I mean, huh. I'm leaning towards 1917 or Joker being the yeah. winner because. I don't know. Joker, the cinematography for Joker wasn't bad. It's I, not I, I thought it was bad. quite pleasant, actually. Yeah. I, I really liked how... Um, I don't know that pleasant would be the word I would use for that. Uh, pleasant <laughs> for me because I, I really enjoyed technically how it was delivered. Just like how everything was blurry in the background and how we were so involved in just Joaquin Phoenix's performance. And they yeah. really they really treasured that. Like They knew what they had and they, they showcased it. Uh, anytime he's on screen, he, there's like a bokeh effect around every now and then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that long lens. Mm. I'm, I'm going to make this exact same argument I made last year for, uh, for uh, the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Shooting in black and white is incredibly difficult. Mm-hmm. Making it interesting is incredibly difficult. That is why Jaron Blaschke deserves to win from now on. I would love to see the lighthouse that to win. That movie uses light, shadow, and a, 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 and its actors mm-hmm. in, in, in camera. Also yeah. considering the aspect ratio, too. Yeah. Like it's we, a box. we, yeah, we had a very narrow view of what mm-hmm. was happening, and it was gorgeous. And it, I mean, it almost had a pinhole camera, mm-hmm. and to, to 
pull that off and to have such a beautiful looking film mm-hmm. is difficult. It's yeah. easy when you're trying to make a one one shot movie like 1917 and all the best technology. It's mm-hmm. easy when you have one character to focus on and the rest can be blocked out. Mm-hmm. It's easy when you have the aesthetic that Ma- Once Upon a Time in Hollywood had. Yeah. And it's easy when you have a director behind the lens like Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. You take a, a, a second time director in Robert Eggers. You take two actors instead of one in Pattinson and Defoe. That means you're splitting your camera's eye. Mm-hmm. And now you have to deliver it in black and white. Yeah. It's the best it's the best thing about shooting movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm with Will. I uh I love the lighthouse. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um <laughs> It was definitely super atmospheric just from the very first shot of just like it was darkness wasn't it and then you just hear all this weird stuff yeah. um you could tell right away like what they're going for and then kind of get the sense of what's going to happen but at the same time it still preserves that unpredictability um i want the lighthouse to win but i think either joker or 1917 is going to win i think 1917 would deserve it more than Joker because Joker, while it wasn't necessarily anything impressive, it still looked nice. Yeah. Like I said, it's not necessarily anything new. Yeah. But it was, uh, as far as you know, it making a movie look good and you know having it be a polished presentation, it's there. It worked for what it was in. So exactly. I, so I'm gonna agree with you. I want Lighthouse to win. It's, it's one of my favorite movies of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the Deeks has got this one. Uh, 1970 Roger Deakins. Uh, he's probably gonna take this one, and that's okay because he's one of the best cinematographers alive. He is. He's a he's a wonderful cinematographer. You can definitely tell when it's a Roger Deakins movie, but like because it looks great, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> every single time. He literally took Unbroken, that Angelina Jolie piece of crap, oh. and it looks so <laughs> beautiful. But even though she did not know how to direct her way out of a paper bag on that movie, mm. and it, it's beautiful. So I mean, Deakins has done gorgeous work, but I mean, he can still take it away too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he just he's so good. So what's good. the uh, what's your favorite movie that he's uh, done cinematography or photography for, based solely on uh, his job? You know, on I, his I, work on the film. I like the one he got. He won for. I like Blade Runner. Even though I thought he okay. he made that movie more interesting than it deserved to be. Yeah. Because I thought he was a there terrible director. Shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I love very you. I'm very yeah. split on the director. Like I respect him, but at the same time, I'm not necessarily a huge follower he's of like his the Disney storytelling. Of, he's like the Disney of indie director. Everybody's on his job. I wouldn't even say he's an indie director, like of of alternative oh, come on. directors. Come on, his first three movies, Incendies and Enemy, are all very very small films. Mm. So he's Enemy. Out. Yeah, Enemy yeah. didn't feel like a small it's film. It's like that big. It has Jake Gyllenhaal in it. Yeah, but just because in a has, car crash. Just because something has a, like big actors and big scenes, set pieces in this decade, doesn't make it not indie. Well, maybe that's like a compliment to him that it doesn't. It didn't feel like a small movie exactly, to me, yeah. but I I'm not crazy about his, the stories that he chooses to. Oh, you didn't uh, like Arrival? No, I mean I I liked the first act. I was like, oh yay, aliens! Let's keep talking to the aliens and shit. But then they had to make it about saving the world. I, I like I like the existentialism in that movie. It worked for me. Yeah, I'm a sucker. I didn't like the twist. I was like, again, oh. that's the existentialism, and that worked for me because I'm a sucker. <laughs> so. Yeah, so so that's our consensus. Deeks is going to win. We would love mm-hmm. for Jaren to win for The Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. Original screenplay, this is always a really fun category for me. Oh, yeah. Usually my favorite movie of the year wins this. Um, it's, mm-hmm. re- it's weird. Original screenplay, we have Knives Out, by with, uh, written by Ryan Johnson. Marriage Story by Noah Baumbach. 1917, Sam Mendes and Christy Wilson Cairns. Once Upon a Time, The Quentin Tarantinos. <laughs> and uh, mm-hmm. Parasite, Bong Joon-ho and uh, Jean Wonheim. Mm-hmm. Very nicely done. I'm picking Marriage Story because it was my favorite film of the year. Mm-hmm. But honestly, the most fun script on here is Knives Out. Yeah. That movie is so much fun. I still haven't seen Knives Out because the trailers annoyed me to death. As they should have. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Landing crumbs in the background. <laughs> with, a, with a whodunit, it can increasingly become so obvious to the audience what tricks it's playing and what uh, where its hand is. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tell where the pocket aces are hidden the whole time in most of these movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel that with Knives Out, um, even though I was right about who did it, oh. uh, and I got it right pretty much 20 minutes in, it, it took me on a ride <laughs> that almost tried to deter me from thinking outside, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm voting for Marriage Story. I just love the dialogue in that movie. Okay. Um, I don't really know if I deserve to vote on this, <laughs> so I guess I'm, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, and I'm going to say what I think is going to win. You're, you're going to pick the fighting Quentin Tarantinos, aren't you? 
I don't want to. <laughs> he already has three of them under his belt, though, so this is that shit. Um, nah, I'm just going to go with you. I'm going to go with Nero's Nero? story. I love Noah Baumbach, too. I just do. I love his movies. Mm. Even though he's, he's like literally a totalitarian behind the camera. I love him. You got to be. He just, if it doesn't say it on the script, don't say it. Mm-hmm. That's just how he is. Yeah. And Sometimes you got to be that way. From what I understand from the uh, a- actress roundtable that Hollywood Reporter put out today, mm-hmm. as of this filming, uh, both Laura Dern and Scarlett Johansson, who are in Mary's story, said that uh, he's that way. Mm-hmm. But Laura Dern's also in Little Women, mm-hmm. which I read a girl about. I haven't seen it. I read it this week. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's directing. Good. You got to direct. <laughs> so next we have adapted screenplay. We have The Irishman, Steve Zellian. Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi. Joker, Todd Phillips and Scott Silver. Little Women, Greta Gerwig. And The Two Popes, Anthony McC- McCartney. Uh, I want Jojo to win, but I think... Hmm. It's Zalian. Zalian's already had already yeah. had an Oscar. And yeah. the Oscars like to suck their own D. <laughs> Man, he's nominated again. Let's give it to him again. Even though I also... I thought that Two Popes had a different design. Interesting. I think I'm just gonna go with the Irishman. I think that's gonna win. It's, yeah. it's, 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 you know, it's not, it's not close. Mm-hmm. Let's get that. Okay. Uh, next we have animated feature. Ooh. How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World by Hugh Dubois. I think you mean how to drain your dragon. That's a totally different conversation. I lost my body, Jeremy Claflin. Cap Claffin. We. Oui. <laughs> Klaus by Sergio Pablos. Missing Link, Chris Butler. And, of course, Toy Story 4, Josh Clooney. Who do you think is going to win? It's Toy Story 4. It's Toy Story 4. I saw it. Is it the best movie in this category? It's probably the worst movie in this category. Oh, they do with kids' movies. Oh, like, they're all grown up now. Oh, they're going to, like, have a love interest now. Oh, they're going to have kids now. So, sure, it doesn't do the last It's the Ice Age thing. It doesn't do the last one. And mm-hmm. it does the second one definitely, but it does everything. It does no, but in this okay. That I guess this is kind of a spoiler, but like, someone ends up having kids. Yeah, but I'm saying like it does all that stuff, but it does so much more too. Specifically, okay. the second one. Okay. I kind of figured where the second one was gonna go. Then I watched it, and I was like, "Well, damn." I do agree. Like the yeah. second one was actually like it's really epic. Was it was epic. Yeah, mm, yeah. It's fantastic. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Toy Story four to win, but I would love Missing Link to win just because I like I love Laika. Mm-hmm. And I just think they deserve Interesting. Um, I just like it when Disney loses. Kubo was their last feature, right? Yeah, and it should have won that one. It it was pretty, but I didn't like the story at all. I love the story. That's mm. the thing. I was just so bored. <laughs> I loved it. And the music was great, too. Mm. Um, I, I, I didn't necessarily like Missing Link as much as some mm. of the other ones. I just I liked it when Disney loses in this category. True, I mean, true. Lose. I would love Disney to They lost them. last year. Thank God for Sony. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going to go with the same thing. Uh... Toy Story Four is gonna win, but uh, I think How to Train How to Drain Your Dragon has a very high chance of winning. <laughs> so next we have, and this is gonna be the the controversial one in the room because it's rant time. Ooh. Best director: Martin Scorsese, The Irishman; Todd Phillips, Joker; Sam Mendes, 1917; Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood; and Bong Joon Ho, Parasite. You know, you know what I noticed there? Mm. The lack of women. Yay! The lack of people of color. <laughs> we got one Asian dude. Yay, and Asians! That's because he made it so unbelievably, <sighs> incredibly difficult to not nominate him. Because mm-hmm. Parasite's that good. Yeah. So, which, which uh, congratulations to these men, as Isoria said. <laughs> uh, who, are, which one of these men are we picking to win the best director of the year? And and if you mm. had to pick some ladies, who would you have picked to put in this category? Ooh. Some ladies. I'd have to go through my whole IMDb list. I, I'm glad you did that. Uh, that you said that because I'm just going to give you some off the top of my head as, as soon as you're done. Oh, as soon as I'm done? Picking who you want to win. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. You're right. I thought you were going to make me go through my IMDb. No, 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 I'm just going <laughs> to do it. I'm just going to go through mine. Mm, <laughs> director. Uh, I think Bong is going to win. I like hearing that. And you know who else likes hearing that? The Bong Hive. Shout out to the Bong Hive. Hashtag Bong Hive. Hashtag Bong Hai. <laughs> so I think I think that there's no chance in hell Bong Joon Ho wins this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's gonna win the foreign language, and then they're gonna tell him that's enough for you. Uh, they're gonna give it to Sam Mendes, even though it's even though it's solely Roger Deakins' mm-hmm. uh, baby here. Damn. Um, uh, Lulu Wang for the farewell. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Greta Gerwig, Little Women. Uh, Mariel Heller for It's a Wonderful Day in the Neighborhood or whatever. 
it's fine. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's She it. took that really boring script and made a much better movie out of it than it deserved <laughs> to be. And um, I just think that when you're, when you're talking about best director, I think that if you're going to be the best director, sometimes you don't have to have the best script. I agree. And in fact, I think that if you have the best script, you should automatically be disqualified from best director because mm-hmm. you didn't do anything. All you did was take a good movie and try to elevate it. Mm-hmm. A good script and try to elevate it. And I think that the best directors can take boring scripts. And particularly, have you seen The Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood? No. So she, she makes all the transitions look like the trolley scene oh. from uh, the Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Mm-hmm. That decision is both ridiculous and refreshing because it worked. Mm-hmm. And for her to make that sort of decision, uh, and then Lulu Wong for the farewell. Are you kidding me? Anybody who's seen the farewell, and if you've seen the farewell, let us know. Twitter, Instagram, uh, at Film Snob Reviews. Um, let us know, and you can tell me, tell me how right I am about the fact that this movie is simultaneously one of the most heartfelt and beautiful pieces of cinema of the entire year. I missed it at Sundance, and I was really upset about it, but I got to catch it here at the Las Vegas Film Festival, and I th- mm-hmm. shout out to those guys for inviting us to the festival and for letting us see this wonderful movie. Um, I didn't think, you know, going into this movie, I didn't think I was gonna. It was gonna make me feel things, and I don't like feeling things because I'm, <laughs> you know, dead inside. But that's it why you're a film critic. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fair point, actually. <laughs> uh, but I felt things, and it was very emotional, and I enjoyed myself watching uh, watching the movie. And I, I'm really disappointed Aquafina didn't get nominated for an award. We're about to talk about her in a little bit, mm. uh, and I'll I'll go on that rant when we get there. You you know how you're like well, we'll talk we'll get to that road when we take it. Uh, I'll get to that rant when we get to that award. Um, I just think that um, when you look at the uh, the directors here, they're all very talented. I think you could easily cut out Todd Phillips. Mm. I think you could easily cut out Quentin Tarantino because I don't find his direction that depth in uh, Once Upon a Time, as I it is in most of his movies. Yeah, I didn't see, and I don't know, maybe that's just his growth as a director, but I didn't see as much of him in the movie. Um, I didn't really get that sense that it was a, a Quentin Tarantino movie until it's just like, ah, violence, ah, craziness, and then all of a sudden he throws his stuff at you. You mean the end? Yeah, basically the end and then certain parts in between. Because, um, I mean, they tell you in the beginning it's a Quentin Tarantino movie. You <laughs> feel it. No, really. <laughs> it, it's uh, written and directed. By Quentin. Can they like, make that bigger? It's the in film of Quentin Tarantino, blah, blah, blah. It's his ninth. It is. Oh, okay. It is his ninth. I wasn't sure. I was going to say eight. But. Apparently he says he's got one more in him. <laughs> one more in him. That's what, well, okay, so we, I was at the Barrick lecture um, that Guillermo del Toro did, and he said um, he always thinks that he's going to quit directing or something like that. He yeah. does one movie, and then he's like, I'm tired. I don't want to do it again. And then, like, something else comes up, and he's like, I have to do this. I have to direct this. And that's, you know, what makes a good director is that, you know, it – kills you but it's something that you have to do and for, for the record the day willie the bull stops directing i will be sad because mm. he's the man mm. I, lo- I love that little hobbit <laughs> uh, he is a little hobbit i love him to death that's great mucho mucho amor Diana. do you think uh so this is i'm looking at my imdb list right now yeah and unfortunately i don't see a whole lot that stands out to me i this was kind of a crap or last year it's kind of a crap year for me as far as movies go. There was some good things, well, but Booksmart was definitely not directed by a woman. So, well, I know that's why it's like the first thing up yeah. here is like I was about to bring up. Do you think Book Booksmart should have been nominated for anything? I th- I think that it had a really good script, and I I thought it would have been that would have been the extent of it. But mm-hmm. I uh I feel like at least compared to the other nominations, mm-hmm. it should have I don't know. I don't know if it's like Oscar nomination. It's definitely not Winston Spirit but Awards, though. At, at the same time, you know, something like Green Book could get nominated for Best Picture. Ugh. You know what? Just go right ahead. Do it. You know, go for yeah. it. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit. De- so I'm going to throw shade at people who like Them That Follows. This is the best. Uh, Booksmart's the best movie Catelyn Dever was in, I think. I agree, yeah. Mm-hmm. Them That Follow wasn't great. If you uh, read my review up you right now, you can catch that now at filmsnobreviews.com. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and do that. It's uh, it wasn't. Yeah. Just go read it. <laughs> but she is a great actress. 
She was good in that. She was great in Booksmart. And Men, Women, and Children. She was great in that mm. with her Jason Ratner joint. Yeah, she's a wonderful young actress. She is. I, 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 I love B.B. Foster. Hail Satan um, was another movie directed by a woman last yes. year Penny, that I feel Penny like. Lane. Yeah, Penny Lane. I love her. Um, I love her work. And I feel like that could have easily been nominated for Best Documentary. Shout Honestly. out to Penny Lane. I love you, girl. You're amazing. She was great. That was a great documentary, mm-hmm. uh, which basically was a middle finger to uh, <laughs> uh, everyone. <laughs> to everyone. Everyone. Bless you. I, I, I love it when a film doesn't take itself too seriously, but also mm-hmm. understands that it's taking itself very seriously. Yeah. And that's what that movie does at the same time. I want to have a book out next year. Yeah. And that's so cool. And it starts out with kind of a troll, too. Like, it, it's, it's just about troll. the the best of the <laughs> trolls. Exactly. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness! But it's it's like it is very eye opening in a way because I was very open to mm-hmm. it when I first started watching it. I know a lot of people would not be open to watching it, yeah. or if they were to watch it, they'd go in with a certain, you know, mindset going in, like, uh, oh, this is just promoting a complete whatever. Be- prejudice against it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to Sundance 2019. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Oh yeah, the tea. Yes. Um. That's gonna yeah. be fun to talk about. I just uh, it was really fun. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, oh, the Nightingale. That's another movie directed by a woman that you saw at Sundance. I did. Did you like that one? We'll talk about that. It's horrifying. <laughs> we'll I, talk about it's that. It's currently on Hulu, and it's horrifying. Oh, it's on Hulu? That's yes, it? Yes, it is, and it's horrifying. It is horrifying. We'll t- we'll get to that. We'll get to her Our later. Our next award is Supporting Actress <laughs> in a Motion Picture. We have Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. Laura Dern for Marriage Story. Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit. Florence Pugh, Little Women. And Margot Blah Blah Boom. Robbie <laughs> for Bombshell. And that's a s- descriptor of both Margot Robbie and the movie she's in. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I- is this pretty much a sweep for Laura Dern? She's won every other award. Yeah. I'm pretty, yeah. This I is mean, pretty much her award, yeah? I mean, she won the Golden Globe. She's probably going to win the SAG. She won the Critics' Choice. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I never watched the movie. <laughs> yeah, Mary's Story is great. You should go home and watch it. Okay. It's so good. Uh, supporting actor. Tom Hanks, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Anthony Hopkins, The Two Popes. Al Pacino, Hwah! The Irishman. Hwah! Joe Pesci, The Irishman. That's not funny. Am I funny? Like I'm a clown, like I amuse you? <laughs> Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh. And once again, there is a consensus. I don't know who's picking as the award show, but I want to hear what you think. I love that Joe Pesci is back in the game. Can so we talk about that? That's amazing, right? I just want to. I just no. I just want to give it to him or Pacino, honestly. No, I want to. I no. I'm voting for Joe. Yeah, you're gonna go with Pesci. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Joe. That's yeah. cool. I like Pesci. I, I I love Pesci. I loved Hopkins and Two Popes. I just thought Jonathan Price outshone him though, mm-hmm. which is why uh, Price got the lead actor. Hanks is so good in that movie. Uh, he elevates that material, mm-hmm. uh, but it's Brad Pitt's award to win. Really? He's won every other. Golden Globe. Just based o- based off of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that you, that's usually all, all you need. Interesting. With the with the supporting roles, it's usually pretty simple. Mm. Where where the where the cogs get thrown in is lead actor or mm-hmm. lead actor. Mm-hmm. That's true. Typically, like last year, Glenn Close won every other award except the Oscar, and then Olivia Coleman got it for the favorite. But Olivia Coleman was is so good though. Fire. Oh She's my so god! Can we talk? Can we just talk about the favorite? It's so, it's so good. <laughs> I was just thinking. I just think about that movie so much. Like I'm just in the bathroom. I'm like, damn, favorite was such a good movie. It's so good. Fuck. Margot's Yargo's Lanthimos is a genius, man. Yeah, I crazy. I don't know. It, it was so sad because we recorded a podcast at Sundance talking about the favorite, talking about last year's nomination. It would have been Oscars. four hours long if I had not uh, stopped talking about. <laughs> I just oh. cut that down to thirty. I, I feel like every award should have just gone to the favorite, honestly. Except it didn't. I know <laughs> it hurts. I know. <laughs> so who are you picking? You picking Pesci, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? That's not a bad choice. I'm sticking with Pitt because he's the consensus right now. Consensus. Lead actress in a motion picture, Cynthia Erivo for Harriet. Scarlett Johansson, Marriage Story. Shir Sharonin, Little Women. Charlize Theron, Bombshell. Could also be used to describe Charlize. Uh, Renee Zellweger, Judy. Mm. So Judy, a.k.a. Renee Zellweger, has swept all these awards again, so that's who I'm going to pick. But shout out to my girl, uh, Scar Joe for getting nominated in both acting categories. Um, I didn't even know that Renee Zellweger had a movie out, and it was called Judy. So It's about Judy Garland. Um, oh, 
shit. Yeah. Those are the kind of roles that win Oscars. Fuck. Well, there you go. You know. Um, honestly, I have no opinion on this <laughs> so, whatsoever. So our consensus pick is Renee Zellweger, ladies and gents. There you go. Next Yay. we have now this one. This is going to be a dogfight right here because <laughs> I have a guy I want to win, mm. which is weird because my favorite actor is also in this category and he's the like Ooh. head rabbit in this mm-hmm. race, mm-hmm. and that's lead actor. Uh, we have Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory. Leonardo, little the, the, the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. His name is Leonardo DiCaprio. No, it's not. It's me. Okay. <laughs> Adam Driver, Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix, Joker. And Jonathan Price, the two pubs. I almost said Joker. Do Joker. we want to say at the same time? Who hey, we, Joker. Who we, who we think is going to win? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix. There we go. Joaquin Done. Phoenix is my favorite actor. He's nominated in this, but I really wouldn't be mad as an Adam Driver solo thing. Yeah. He's so good yeah. in Marriage Story. You know, I am i wouldn't be angry, honestly. He's so good in a Marriage Story playing Noah Baumbach. I mean, not Noah Baumbach. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy. Just like Scarlett Johansson's not playing Jennifer Jason Lee. I mean, isn't playing Jennifer Jason Lee. What? Just some lady. Some actress who's a mm. Broadway and film star. What? what? Just like just like Adam Driver's character is a director? What? It's not autobiographical? Uh-uh, not at all. <laughs> nope. So for best picture, because we pretty much as- assume that Joaquin's going to take this sucker, mm-hmm. uh, we have nine movies. They, you know they could have put ten, and we'll talk about what we would have put as our phantom ten. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. we have Ford v. Ferrari. The Irishman. George Rabbit. Joker. Little Women. Marriage Story. 1917. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Parasite. I said we keep seeing the same movies over mm-hmm. and over again. And yeah. uh, it's just kind of grating. <laughs> I know. And um, I don't know. There's not really much for me to get like fired up over. Nope. You know, like it, like there's a favorite and then there's a green book but there's no range the of movies. Exactly. So there's nothing really on the level on that level, like last year with Favorite and Roma. Roma's so but good. at the same time, I don't think there's anything really as bad as Bohemian Rhapsody or The Green Book. Or Black Panther. Why is that a Best Picture nominee? If you oh. think it's a Best Picture nominee, I will literally fight you. Yeah. You're... I will fight you. You are crazy. The only taste you have is in your mouth. That is bias. It's in your mouth. What? The only taste a person who thinks Black Panther deserves to be Best Picture has is in their mouth. <laughs> there you go. Period. I know. I thought. I thought that <laughs> he's making a face. I thought that meant something else. <laughs> no, no, no. So, what do you think is gonna win? What do you want to? Um, that's tough. Through all your indifference. I um, if I was just like off the top of my head, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Irishman. Okay, is that and is that what you want to win? Um. Or do you have no opinion eh. on a want? I I would go for Parasite. And that's pretty much it. I'm like I said. Otherwise, I'm really indifferent. When you nominate a foreign film for Best Picture, you're basically playing your hand as to what's going to win foreign film. That's yeah. the problem I have. <laughs> uh, so if you had to pick a Phantom Ten, what would you have picked? Um, Since there's ten spots available. Man, I really don't have too many high-rated movies. Yeah. Uh, on my list for 2019. For yeah, it's been quite rough. I have had a couple standouts. I don't know if they're necessarily on the level of, you know, winning an Oscar. Yeah, I don't she, think necessarily. She like weird shit. I do like weird shit, but I even if I were to choose something from 2017 or two, uh, from this year um, to be the Phantom Ten, I don't even know if that would necessarily be a winner, yeah. quote unquote. So I, I, it's my winner. Yeah, so. I would have put the Lighthouse in there. The Lighthouse is good. Or I would have put uh, Uncut Gems. Respect to A24. Hmm. Yeah. Thing that really stood out to me is that when you get a working pass, you're basically like a piece of shit. Mm. It, you're you can go to press and industry screenings, but it's basically the equivalent to a uh, wait lines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is it, I mean, it worked for us, but uh, now we have general passes. So. Damn right, we got general passes. Damn Skippy. Thank you to Sundance for that, by the <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> So last year, we talked about this. Uh, probably our worst film of the year, and this is no surprise. Oh my god, It's yes. a movie that we saw at Sundance. The unbelievably laughable film, which you can watch right now on Hulu, mm-hmm. Wounds, starring Wounds. Army Hammer. Oh, yeah. uh, the thing is, the hammer. we were both there watching it, so we wasted an opportunity for one of us to see a good movie. Exactly. <laughs> to but watch I'm, I'm glad movie. we were both there, though. We could both experience the catastrophe 
that was wounds. Yeah, I, catastrophe doesn't even begin <laughs> to like explain. I like we this. were just blown out of the w- like there was there was hype about it too when we were at Sundance. They were like at the premiere they had cockroaches all in the seats and stuff, and it was so nasty. Blah blah blah. I'd like to partially blame my boy Raf for this one, <laughs> Rafael <laughs> Montemayor. You. We love uh, you, Raf. You, you you set us up, and I feel set up for this. Mm-hmm. Cause that movie is terrible, bro. And you're like, I don't like the cockroaches. <laughs> I hate you for that, man. Because you set me up, bro. He also gets scared easy, though. Yeah, but this thing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's there's no, there's nothing good about this movie. Mm-hmm. The acting is is wooden. The script is basically a piece of toilet tissue. Have you seen the director's uh, previous film? No, I don't want to see it now. Yeah, I uh. I still, I still do want to watch it because uh, I still hear things about it. Nah, I, but yeah, I don't know. If I were someone different, wounds would have definitely ruined the filmmaker for me. Killing yeah, him. if it were because it's me, it did ruin the filmmaker for me. <laughs> and I have no interest in seeing anything else that this guy makes. Yeah, I. Uh, if anyone doesn't already know, uh, February fifth, uh, right when we were in the middle of Sundance, I wrote a scathing review on it. Oh boy! Oh yeah, I gave it an F plus. An F plus. That's F plus. way too high. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a quote here. I'm just gonna take a quote Ooh, here. Oh yes, please do. If you have an enough fear of roaches, then maybe you'll get something out of this horror. And that's an exclamation point. The acting is the real horror, though. The acting was not really all that impressive, as the writing and story are overwhelmingly nonsensical. Quite a few of the characters and their plots threads are actually useless, just like the movie. Mm-hmm. This is a direct quote from the lady to my left here, and mm-hmm. she's exactly right. This movie is terrible. Um, it's kind of hilarious, though. It's like not. at the end, at the end, it's hilarious because you're like, "What the fuck did I just see?" But up until that point, you're like, "I have no idea what's going on. This is going on for way too long. Nothing is happening, and everything is happening at the same time." But do you care? No. No. <laughs> you're like, like you're you just you watching some douchebag run around you with just, his head cut off. You just feel like you wasted 90 minutes of your life. Mm-hmm. Babak and Vare, if you make another movie, don't send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> don't I, don't I have, talk to I me. I have no interest in this thing. Mm-hmm. I have no interest in Dakota Johnson's basically wasting this movie. Yeah, she's like a a mannequin. Like literally. They're I mean, all mannequins. Zazie Beetz is useless in this movie. Yeah. Ooh, Z- well... Now that I think about it, Zazie Beetz's character in Wounds is kind of similar to her the character one in Joker. Joker. Yep. Now that I think about it, that's kind of... Don't think about that movie. That's so head. weird. This movie makes my head hurt. That's so I hate weird. this movie. Yeah. I hate it so much. Horrible movie. And leading on to that, like, as horrible as Wounds was, I was kind of blown away because this was our first year at Sundance, and this was the first time I'd ever gone to Sundance and seen, like, all of what they had. I was surprised at how much I did not like what they had there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Me and Landon went to go see Premature. We had heard a lot of hype about this director and a lot of stuff. And this, this Premature is nominated for an Independent Spirit Award. Mm-hmm. And this movie sucks. It did suck. It's, uh, Landon, does it suck? I have to remember what... Uh, <laughs> sure. It's the one about the girl who lives in New York. And doesn't remember. She has, like, her boyfriend, and her boyfriend is, like... Uh, whatever, you know what I mean? I don't recognize any oh, of this shit. Yeah, that shit sucks. Right? I mean, it was Bale boring. Was so the two <laughs> things that that really didn't help this film to start with is they played it at the library theater, which if you're going to Sundance for your first time this year, don't go see anything at the library or try to avoid it if you can. Wait, what's um, it called? The library. It's the theater at the, the Park City called, Library. Yeah. Oh, it's just called the library? So, Landon, you're 6'2"? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm 5'7". I can barely fit in these seats. Mm-hmm. Imagine him trying to fit in them. Your knees are like cramped. So the thing is... Um, you can't fit if you try to get up during the movie. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing it has going for it is there's a coffee shop downstairs. <laughs> That's it. That's another interesting point is um the whole setup and the structure of how you're supposed to see the films and then how they lead people into the the movies. I I understand like since it's such an event, it's so populated and so condensed. Uh, there's so many people there and the volunteers bless their souls. Like they have to lead everyone in and help everyone out. Um, they were the nicest people there, and I really appreciated appreciated their work and everything. But like um, the first movie that I had saw at Sundance, The Hole in the Ground, which I also wasn't a fan of, I saw it with Raf. And um, there's a review of that actually on the YouTube channel. Yes, yes, uh, we we did a podcast together, so it's check crazy. that out. It's very great. 
Um, but we go into the theater. We're the last ones there because we're just running over to the theater. Yeah. And we were also in the wait list, like the critic wait list Ugh. equivalent line. And we were the last ones there. The theater was really weird. I think it was one of the holiday theaters. It is, yeah. And it was weird because I was looking at the screen and the whole grand, hole in the ground is supposed to be a horror movie. But I also ended up seeing other movies at the same theater, the same theater, and the screen was dark. It was too dark. I was, like, squinting my eyes. I was like, I can't see anything that's happening. And it's a horror movie, you know, so it, it's going to be a dark movie. Kind of fun, yeah. You can't, well, no. You couldn't see what was going on. I was that's like, fun. I don't understand what's Shout happening. Shout out to DirecTV for picking that one up. <laughs> yeah. And then um, when we were led into the theater, the whole thing was packed. Yeah. And it was so dark. The screen was dark. There wasn't anybody to lead us up the stairs. So I was crawling up the stairs on my hands and trying not to knock into people i ended up knocking into this lady's knees i think and i was like trying to scout out a free seat while like there was brightness there were like bright images on the screen while there were and raf um he managed to nab us some seats but uh in the process of doing so he ended up knocking someone's coffee over raf is a very large individual <laughs> but still, like, I, I was like, sorry, sorry. And I had to, like, move past people's legs and, like, really squeeze in. And it was a very uncomfortable experience. Like, I was kind of scared because it was so dark. Um, we could have ended up, like, tripping or something. And yeah. it was just kind of perilous. That, that extra <laughs> celebratory way that they put people into the theater. Mm. Little did we know going into the theater to see Wounds, that was just them getting us ready for the firing squad. <laughs> Which would have been preferable to having to sit through that movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny, though, because when you talk about that, a lot of people talk about f films that were at Sundance. And we must have missed all the quality. Because the souvenir sucks. Oh, my God. So <laughs> the, that was an experience. Yeah, Landon smiling. He was there. We were all tired. It was the last movie we saw before. Um, coming back to Vegas. Yeah, before coming back. Everyone was kind of like, yeah, it was super rough because I had to. Was it the thing where we, we were standing in line for a while, weren't we? Yeah. For yeah. a long time. And it was the only day it snowed. Yeah, it was snowing hardcore. Everyone was just kind of over it. Yeah. We even, like, after we saw the movie, there was a bus that we were waving to, and it stopped for us, but then it changed its mind, and it just kept on driving. And we were like, what the fuck? Yeah. And we were just standing there in the sleet and in the snow. But anyway, we saw the movie, and we were like, okay, it's got Tilda in it, and it's got uh, her kid daughter. in it her daughter heart harmony no honor, honor. something something when it's name. honor honor yeah. honor swinton hashtag white people names <laughs> uh and yeah it was just one of the uh the most boringest things i've ever seen it's literally a cycle of abuse that you wish would end because the movie's so damn boring mm -hmm. but you're like who's actually being abused here the main character or me <laughs> and you question exactly. your sanity the entire time and I don't care what anybody says about how pretty it looks because it looks 32 millimeter nah, nah, nah. that yeah. movie is terribly written mm -hmm. the direction is I think she might have been on methamphetamine it was very stale just like the, the other characters it was very stale <laughs> it, it, it's too British for my taste it's it. even then there the, uh, another th funny thing is um there is a British comedian that was in it and he totally did not belong in that movie um I forget what his name is, but he's a black guy who he's talks. He's Australian. Slightly. It's Richard Aoyde. Oh, is that? Oh, he's Richard Australian. Richard yeah. Garth Marenghi. I think so. Yeah. I think, he's I think he's Australian. And I'm like, what is he doing here? And he plays like a really weird character, yeah. Yeah, he's who's from the he's IT like crowd, right? a fancy, a fancy pants. Yeah, he's um, a hipster. Yeah, he's a like, British he's an 80s hipster. He's an 80s British hipster. Yeah. Because the movie takes place in the early 80s. <laughs> and it's so funny. I'm like, what? I think that was probably the only part of the movie that was interesting i woke up yeah. it for like i rich people uh reenacting heaven knows what yeah you know what horribly that's a good analogy yeah <laughs> it's like why do i why do i care about these people you know like there's a whole thing happening but the characters are just whatever you know yeah. you know it sucks that she's in the relationship that she's in but it never progresses from there until it's over and you, well, I don't know. Like it was funny when it was over. There was some guy behind us, and uh, he was like, "Oh my god, that was so emotionally powerful." I had to do everything in my power not to turn back to that asshole, and be like, "Bro." Well, they had it before what? the first one came out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wait, what? Yeah. Souvenir Part Two. I see. Yeah. A sequel? They call that Electric Boogaloo. Oh. No thank you. No thank you to any of that. Horrible movie. Yeah. And you know, it you know, filmmaking is hard. We we all know. 
filmmaking is hard. You have to do a lot. You have to spend a money, a lot of money. Um, they went through whatever they went through to make that movie. But honestly, that was one of the most joyless experiences I've ever had watching the movie in the theater. You know what's funny? Mm. You're not wrong. Yeah. And, uh, like, the, yeah. So the Sundance was chock full of very interesting, if not a lot of negative experiences having to do with people and having to do with the theaters and then having to do with people in the theaters. Um, I saw this one film. I think it's a, a newer Blumhouse movie, and it was called Sweetheart. Oh, yeah, that's on uh, Netflix. Is it really? Yeah. Okay, that's funny because I didn't hear anything about its release, but I watched it, um, and uh, I don't know. It's like Castaway, but a monster movie, and it was fairly interesting. Pretty accurate, actually. Pretty accurate, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how the pitch went. <laughs> He's like, do you want to see Castaway? It's like, Castaway, but what if Wilson was a great white? But what if there were monsters? But yeah, um, it was just... It was just... <laughs> what if there were monsters? <laughs> Let's talk about that voice for a second. But what if there were monsters? Oh, no. Not monsters. Monsters. The monsters. The monsters. But uh, it was one of those movies where it's just like, it's scary if you're afraid of very strong music cues that go brrrr or sweet here's a music cue be scared go there you be go scared. but it was funny because um it was a press and industry screening so you think that people would be used to watching movies right they especially be, yeah horror movies but there was this guy right behind me an adult man yeah. right behind me which <laughs> oh my god the a music cue went off and I don't even remember any jump scares. It wasn't a scary movie. Yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be like a creepy movie or whatever. But uh, a music cue goes off. Boom. And he kicks my fucking head. He <laughs> kicked my seat. And I and he did it more than once, too. Oh, he did it twice. And I look back at him and I glare at him. I glared at him. I was like, bro. Are you for real right now? That movie like, was that scary. People at Sundance, like a lot of them, like to really. Oh no! Blah blah blah. These are the kind of people who should not be in a movie. Jesus theater, Christ! Like, you, we get it. You're like into the movie or whatever. You don't need to be vocal about it. This well, I guess in the way, if we were at the souvenir, would have made it a little more interesting. So, yeah. as far as like the story goes, I was just like, this is fucking heaven knows what. Only it's so bad yeah it's pretty it's so bad it's so watered down it's uh it's about people who i don't care about and probably won't remember other than the fact that i didn't enjoy watching it i wasn't affected by it at all it was just bad yeah i don't disagree with you on that the film itself is very very flat yeah is there anything else that happened at sundance that you yes it was it we were there for some tv show party and there was daniel radcliffe yeah, boy. But yeah, it's boy. funny, though. But he's the only celebrity who I saw at Sundance. Oh, too. I saw Jason Momoa, too. Yeah. yeah. He's, really, he's really tall. He's really tall. What's funny is I saw him on the way to the party. Oh, interesting. So Jason Momoa's walking one way, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm not sure he's like that, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> and he's a really cool guy. Uh, he seems really nice. His, I don't know why he has bodyguards. It seems redundant. <laughs> <laughs> the bodyguards were like my he's height. He's his own bodyguard. Yeah, the bodyguards were like my height. No, they're not. <laughs> good. I like that. Good good, good throwback to Daniel Radcliffe there, Andy. <laughs> nice transition. That's a, I, I got to tell Harry Potter straight through his face because I've never seen any of his damn Harry Potter movies. Why you? Why would you do that? He said, I don't need to see them. So? He said, you don't need to worry about any of those. Aww. And then I told him I loved What If and I thought it was good stuff. And it is. What If is great. If you have Amazon Prime, go watch it. It's one of the best romantic comedies of the last decade. Yeah. Period. He sounds lovely. He's very nice. I would have loved to meet him. He's short. Funny, yeah, he, well, yeah, he's short. He's so shorter than me. Good for you. <laughs> but I, I also have a Daniel Radcliffe story. Oh, please. Um, so I'm on the shuttle, and we're at a stop, and we're waiting for the, the bus to, to go. And I'm sitting nec- uh, next to this nice little old lady, and um, she's foreign. She's like some sort of, um, I don't know. European? Yeah, some sort of Western European. Um, and, uh, she's like, she, she pats me on the shoulder. She's like, da-da-da-da-da-da. I'm like, huh? Excuse me? 
and I can't really understand what she's saying, but then she's like, she starts going on about like Harry Potter and Hermione or something, and she's pointing to the window. I'm like, uh, Hermione? What? I I just heard her say Hermione <laughs> for some reason. And then I look at the window, Hermione? and then there's another lady outside, um, of like at the at the depot, yeah. and she's turned to this young man and she's waving at him and he's waving at her back and I'm like holy shit it's Daniel Radcliffe it's <laughs> and he's Rat. yeah and he's he's wearing sunglasses and um like you know winter gear and stuff and he, he's being all nice and he, he's waving and stuff I'm like holy shit and the bus just rides away I'm like I never saw Harry Potter how about that it's funny <laughs> yeah it, it, it also it's the best movie I saw at Sundance mm. I love this thing drug addled 30 something women who just cannot get their damn shit together. Mm. Loved it. Me. Now, give me one that you loved. And then, cause I have a couple of, uh, one other one I want to talk about that we should talk about. Only one other one? Just one other one that we're going to touch on. Interesting. Well, talk about most. Right here on my laptop, I know, though. <laughs> You're a <laughs> cheater. I cheated. Oh, why does it keep redirecting me? But Mope, yeah, everything hates me. But Mope was, I think, really the first film that I watched um, that I was really like, okay. Now this is like some Sundance level quality shit that I was expecting. And um uh when we got the Sundance, I don't know how far we were into the trip when I got very sick. I got like a really bad cold and stuff and just I had to you know, I don't know, all my senses were shot and I was yeah. fucking tired. Yeah, I was I think I was sick for pretty much the entire trip. So that sucked, um, and I remember because it was a midnight screening that we went to uh, on the way home because not home to the hotel. Um, I was crying all the way there because there was black ice everywhere, and I was just so tired and so emotional. I was just like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm gonna slip on some black ice, and I'm gonna I'm open. My life will end. Yeah, I was just like, I'm gonna die at Sundance. <laughs> I'm like, I can't take this anymore. But. Uh, everything was made up for for movies like uh, Mope, which I uh, also have a review up. I think pretty much all the movies that we're talking about now um, are all up on the site. But Mope was I've ever seen one of them. Quite the experience. Um, it was so much freaking fun. Uh, Landon still has the condom that they gave us mm -hmm. with the uh, the logo on it and everything. And what does it say on it? Like what? It just says Mope. Yeah, but it's like something sized or like, like XXL this is like or something. triple triple XL sized, right? Yeah, something Cause like it's that. Like triple X because you're a porn uh, star. Yeah, because um, the whole thing is about uh, people called mopes, which is a slang for uh, porn people, people who work in porn. Um, <laughs> and it's like it goes absolutely. If you go in, yeah, porn people. <laughs> but uh, if you know absolutely nothing about what it's about, then you're like you're uh you're all good you need to go watch it because it's like the most fucking unexpected movie of all time like you're just watching it and you think it's gonna go one way you think it's like a a buddy comedy about two guys who work in porn and they end up like working in like the ball busting genre of porn and uh it just it goes completely in a direction you're not expecting and it's kind of horrifying it's really not for people who can't well i mean it's about porn so you could guess like what kind of shit's in it but then it really just goes to a place that you're not expecting and uh yeah it's really shocking and i really enjoyed it you can also go follow us on letterbox it's lost orange for shy and films not reviews for myself <laughs> we have all the films we saw at sundance there in a list on my Letterbox at Film Snob Reviews. The other film I wanted to talk a lot about is one that I, I loved. It was called Before You Know It. And um, Hannah Pearl uh, stars and directs in this. And the father-daughter relationship thing that goes on in there, it just worked for me. And I remember just being totally surprised by what what story they were telling. Because it's a story we've all seen a million times, but it's it, there's a there's a personalness, you know? A closeness that you feel to these characters as you're watching them uh, figure out life and and the family business and Judith Light plays their mother who's estranged from them and as everything's just kind of hitting the fan these two women who are just trying to make ends meet and keep their theater open it's it's stunning uh, Hannah Pearl Ut does a great job directing this movie I'd say she does an even better job directing it than she does starring in it um, because she's that good um, I, I, I 
I just think that there's something to be said for an elegance in a screenplay like that, an elegance to the way Mandy Patinkin plays the father. He's hilarious, but when what happen, inevitably happens to him happens to him, you just feel empty, like your own father, like this happened to your own dad. And that sort of thing stays with you the whole film, and it just works. And when you can do that and get on that level, that's good stuff to me. Hmm. What else you got for us? Um, so overall, as far as uh, movies that I did like, a oh majority boy. of them came from, <laughs> I'll get to that soon, but a majority of them came from the, the documentaries. So uh, movies like Midnight Family, which is a, a really incredible, really uh, kind of, I don't know, it just... You know really, that just hit theaters? Yeah. It came it, out in December. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's amazing, like, how far into the future they actually, these things actually Clemency get just came out, released. too. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, Midnight Same. Family, which is about um, these kind of rogue uh, EMTs, uh, they just have, like, a an ambulance, and um, they're not attached to, like, any hospitals or whatever. They just work uh, on their own. They're, like, independent from everything else. They work uh, as an ambulance, um, this family, and it's it's really intense and really grounded and kind of hilarious sometimes. Like, everyone has got so much personality, and just the dynamic of the family is just, like, you get so into it. But at the same time, like, they're fucking saving people's lives. And it's so crazy. Another documentary, John Line, that um, it, it, it's on Hulu. Y- yeah, um, you know how people, I guess, you know, a lot of the times older people look at kids and teenagers and see what they're doing on social media. And Let's just like, call this what it is: boomers looking at millennials. Okay, broom, boomer, boomer, boomer. Okay, boomer. Right for boomer. <laughs> but um, it. It looks at uh, the younger generation with a much more sympathetic and much more human light instead of like, oh, let's shame these kids and the crazy things they're doing on social media and stuff and how ridiculous this all is. And while it does like, it, it's kind of exposing like what this is. It's about um, a kid, this kid, this teenager who who went want to ends up being like a wants to end up being a like a YouTube star, kind of like. I don't know, Jake Paul or whatever, um, and what he has to go in order to go through that, how he's kind of, like, making himself his his whole business and stuff and going through having a manager and stuff. Um, it's really kind of sad, and it's really eye-opening, and just, I don't know. It's just lovely. I think uh, I love the perspective that it takes with, um, you know, not trying to attack these kids, but trying to understand them and... Uh, just how that whole system works. Um, Hail Satan was probably my favorite movie, period, from Sundance. So good. Yes, we, we've touched upon it, and it's wonderful. It's hilarious. And it's, it's currently playing on Hulu. Yeah. It's eye-opening, even if uh, even if you're like, yeah, say Satanism. I just realized Hulu bought all the good documentaries. <laughs> huh? Hulu bought the two best documentaries from Sundance. Yeah. yeah. Hail Satan they and Jawline. They yeah. got it. They got it packed down. They also bought um, <laughs> wounds. <laughs> they uh, also bought wounds. Two steps forward, one step back. That's how it works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Good God. <laughs> I highly recommend Hail Satan for everybody, even if you're like afraid of Satanism. It's not what you think. It's like a. Uh, it's. Not nah, fair. Yeah, it's not what you think. Just watch it, and you'll understand. And it actually, I think everyone should stand for it, you know, because it's about politics and it's about separation. It's pro- it's about proving we need more separation between church and state. It's a movie that dispels hypocrisies. It's a movie that talks about what's wrong with both the, the United States government and the entire construction of religion. Mm-hmm. When you look at, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you look at, and the movie touches on looking at the tenets of Satanism against the Ten Commandments and which one makes more sense and how to live your life, it does a really good job of convincing you about the tenets of, of Satanism. Yeah, because everything just makes sense. And that's the, that's the point they're trying to make while also being trolls. And it's hilarious. Yeah. No. It, they're, it's so intelligent. It's so straight-laced, too. It, Penny Lane plays it right down the middle, mm-hmm. where you know that she knows what's going on, mm-hmm. 
but she doesn't care. Yeah. That it's so self-aware. Thing. That's just the thing is that it's so self-aware so and good. it's not like even, it doesn't even feel like it comes from a biased nature. Like, uh, while it does prove, it, it is about proving like why the church of, uh, or not the church, the temple of Satan, the satanic temple. That's what it's called. Yeah. Uh, the satanic temple and why, uh, it's out there doing good and what it is and stuff. It still feels like it comes from a very like grounded down to earth, uh, foundation. It's not just like, Oh, we're not going to talk about like what anybody else thinks about it or what anybody, uh, yeah, just like not necessarily antagonizing everyone else. It's just talking about, you know, what they are out to do what they set out to do. It doesn't thumb its nose. And that nose. stuff, yeah. And that stuff makes sense, you know. They're out to do good things and yeah. that's just the whole point. Is they're trying to uh bring the worst yeah out of, you know, religious organizations and how they're affecting One of the brilliant things I never realized the democracy. first time I saw it that I realized after I watched it again mm. at Las Vegas Film Festival is that it, it touches on its own ability to be radicalized. Mhm. Yeah, it does. It does. They they do cover that like uh they can't yeah, they do talk about how that. how something like religion is basically r- running on an Occam's razor the entire time, and it, you can fall to the radicalism at any point. And mm-hmm. there's this church in Detroit, I think it was, yeah, it was a church in Detroit that had gone the full deranged Satanism route, and they get excommunicated. Mm-hmm. That's what needs to happen, maybe on the other side too. I don't know. Yeah, it's up to you. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. um, but I, yeah. I, I agree. And I think that that's what that's what Sundance movies are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to make you think. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the report too, which is on Amazon Prime. That one was really cool. The year of Adam Driver continues. He's in three <laughs> movies, three movies, and two of them are good. Chinese New Year of Adam Driver. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I like Adam Driver. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, I think those three documentaries are definitely conversation starters. Yeah. Especially Hail Satan, which is I think like, Midnight like you said, Family is exquisite. I actually, like, yeah. I actually finally saw it. Oh, um, it's exquisite. And the I think the father he actually died not too long after they they finished filming, uh, from a heart attack. Yeah, of all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which then puts also, you even closer to the family. You did see the Nightingale too, which I just recently saw I on did. Hulu. Hulu picked that one up you wanna, too. You want to talk about that one? <laughs> I'd rather not. No? Uh, everybody like should it. see it, but if you don't see it, it will be because no, you can't no, no, handle no, no, the no, truth. No, 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 no. I don't think everyone should see it. No, everyone should because then they'll Mm-mm. be scarred for life. Well, if if in that aspect is why people should see it, they might as well see I Spit on Your Grave. Or, or, <laughs> or a Serbian film. Oh my god. No. No babies here. Yes. All of the, all <laughs> no of the babies. No small children here. All of the babies. Um, all, so, yeah. yeah. So, it's so funny to me because, like, when I look at these things, uh, typically the studio, the, the, the big winners are usually the, the studios that pick up the ones with the most hype. Mm. Uh, so, for example, Netflix got a lot of hype for picking up uh, Extremely Vile and Wickedly, whatever the hell it's called. Zac and, Efron. And, yeah, and Velvet Buzzsaw. They got a lot of. Oh, yeah. Buzz for picking those Which, up. Which, to be fair, those are very Netflixy movies. Right. And then, you know, <laughs> IFC picked up my least favorite movie, the whole festival, Greener Grass. Um, but really, the winners in this movie, I think in this entire thing, as we've discussed, have been Hulu and Amazon. Mm-hmm. Because Amazon's picked up two or three, picked up Britney Runs a Marathon, picked up The Report, picked up two or three really good films, and then Hulu's picked up the two best documentaries mm-hmm. from the festival besides Midnight Family. But it's interesting, though, because I think um, in that pool of films, it's also the most, like, um, the those are the... Buzzworthy. Those are deeper films. Yeah, yeah. I think those are the films that um, people who really, really love film aim to watch. Yeah. While Netflix is more just the, just like in every mm-hmm. man's, you know, And that's what I think Hulu did well roster. too, because they picked up Little Monsters too, which is very mm-hmm. much like a... That is very much more so a Netflix movie. Right, but it's very much like a, that's what I'm saying, they picked up such a diverse lineup of films, Hulu. Mm-hmm. So I gotta commend them for uh, spending their money and spending it right. Good job by them and Amazon. I think they were the winners yeah. of, of, I think they won. Uh, yeah. Sundance. <laughs> and, and Tiff too. Uh, yeah. They did a great job there. I, I just think that overall, uh, that our first Sundance was a really interesting experience, and I think our second one will be a lot better. A lot more improved. And speaking of our second Sundance, mm. let's talk about some of the movies on our radar. Oh, yes. I've got okay. them right here. 
Wonderful. So the first movies we're going to talk about are the ones in the U.S. dramatic competition. These are the basic American films that, you know, are here. And I think you're <laughs> going to have a lot of the same ones that I do because I know that even though we don't we don't have the same taste, we like the same shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we pretty like much, the same pretty shit. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, so what, what do you got there? What do you got on your list there? Um, so I have uh, Zola. Which I was interested in as well by uh, Janique Sabravo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what is this thing about? Yeah. Because I, I just, I went, I combed through all of the movies mm-hmm. and all of the po- projects mm-hmm. that they're showing, uh, so I've probably forgotten about all of them. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it's Here it is. Uh, Zola meets Stefani at a restaurant where Zola waitresses, and the two immediately click over pole dancing. That's all I need to know. Bada bing, bada boom, done. I think I'm good. Done. <laughs> pole dancing? Yes. Who's in this movie? Uh, we've got... Uh, Taylor Page. Oh, Riley Keough. Riley Keough's in this movie. She's oh, some good stuff. Oh, she's in some good shit. She was in The Lodge. American Honey, The House That Jack Built. The Lodge. The Lodge. She was in The Lodge. Oh, she was in that one other one where she played the teenage girl. What was that movie called? It had one word title. It was like Love or something like that. Um, what was it called that she was in? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I, I remember thinking it was better than it should have been. But this movie looks pretty good. It's yeah. A24. So, that you can't not see it. It's A24. <laughs> As a critic. <laughs> like, you're like <laughs> legally obligated to go see this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I noticed the second movie that's on your radar there is something that was on my radar, too. Mm-hmm. And that's never, rarely, sometimes, always. There's just something about like the, the concept and the subject matter that I gravitate to. Well, it's from the director of Beach Rats. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, and yeah. it's a focus feature. It felt feature. like love. Yeah. It's a focus feature. Mm-hmm. And so I love focus features. Um, I don't know anybody in the cast, but... Sharon Van Etten is in this? Sure, why not? Julia Holter is the composer? Yeah, we don't know who these people are. Yes, you do. I don't. Sharon Van Etten, they're, well, they're both wonderful uh, indie musicians. Nope. Experimental. Nope. Well, mostly Julia Holter. Oh my gosh, I'm going to cry. So that's going to be an interesting score, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. You should uh, listen to Julia Holter's Eliza, stuff. Eliza Keatman is the director. She also wrote this thing. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's about um, a cashier, and she lives in like the rural, rural part of Pennsylvania where there's a lot of Amish people, and she gets pregnant. Yeah. Uh, so she seeks an abortion, heads over to NYC, and yeah, basically, her and her cousin try to you know get her an abortion and get this thing taken care of before it gets out of control for a young person like her. I don't and, know why, but I'm a sucker for those kind of movies. Uh, you know what, though? I think that that's... <laughs> Totally okay. You're a young woman yourself, so mm-hmm. that makes sense. That that's the sort of thing that would hit you. Yeah. Um. It makes total sense. Yeah. Um. This one though, I noticed this is on your your screen. Save there too. yourself. Save yourselves, which yeah. I am looking super forward to because I love Sunati Mani mm-hmm. because she's from uh she's from one of my favorite shows Glow. Oh. Sunita Mani. Shit. And I uh she- I recognize the guy from um Search Party. Yeah. Which I really yeah. liked. I really yeah. liked that and show. This one, as you can see, is um. No, there's no distributor yet, but this one feels like it would be an A24 movie, too. Yeah? You think so? Yeah. I, it, just the look of it and the feel. Either that or Neon. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. one of the... Uh, I just look at these. Look at this film and the way that it's described. Uh, hip Brooklyn couple? Mm-hmm. That's A24. <laughs> well. They find themselves dependent on technology. Uh, so basically, they try to disconnect and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't do that in 2020. Yeah. Don't disconnect. Oh, and also there's aliens. Yeah, so. <laughs> there's aliens. This that's, thing looks that's what, so like, funny. Yeah, it does. It looks hilarious. This looks so funny. And the fact that it doesn't have a distributor yet is going to bode well for it. Because mm-hmm. I think this thing's going to make a ton of money. I'm really excited for this other one that you have on here. Surely. The top, these first four movies are all on my radar. So we have the exact mm-hmm. same four movies. That's awesome. Where, our next movie is where we separate, actually. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. What I have that you don't have. And did you see Madeline's Madeline? No. So Madeline's Madeline is like an exploration of... Uh, psychosis and um, bipolarity. Oh, interesting. Uh, and it's really well done. Mm-hmm. And so Josephine Decker was the director of that, and, I, and she's doing this film starring Michael Schulberg. Is that who it is? Yeah, Michael Schulberg and Elizabeth Moss. I knew I did mm-hmm. Elizabeth Moss is in this. Logan Learman is also in this, as, as is Odessa Young. So that's a really good cast. Yeah. And a really good director. Mm-hmm. Uh, this thing looks like it's going to surprise. What do you think? What? What do you think? This, I think this is going to be a surprise. A surprise. Yeah, like a really good surprising film. One that people think, are going to go uh, back to at the end of the f- festival. I think it's going to be unsurprisingly uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this one's going to have some legs from the festival. Much yeah. in the way that Madeline's Madeline did where it'll have a lot of 
buzz from the Independent Spirit Awards mm-hmm. and that posse of people who hang out there. Well, um, when I see uh, Elizabeth Mo- Moss... Moth. Elizabeth Moth. <laughs> Elizabeth Moth taking on roles like this. Uh, I'm reminded of like Queen of Earth. Yeah, I loved Queen of Earth. Yeah. Uh, I I I also liked her smell, which I I thought was good. Her performance is better than that movie though. Hundred mm. percent. So this is the movie. Your last movie on your list of five in the dramatic competition are, is where we differ. Because mm-hmm. you have a forty year old version. Mm-hmm. Spelled V E R S I O N. Yeah. Can you kind of give virgin. us a? Can you kind of give us a? Synopsis of what this is about without going into too much of what it says here. Just kind of give us a... Okay. So why I was attracted to it. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I just get the tingle, you know? (laughs) It's that tingle. Uh, it just sounded... I think that might be something to get penicillin shot for. I'm just saying. (laughs) The tingle? Hell no. Landon, did you get yours yet? You might want to get one. Spidey sense. From the sounds of it, bro. Yeah, it's on the bucket list. (laughs) No, I already gave it my AIDS, so... It's kind of too late. I can't make that joke. (laughs) Just (laughs) edit it out. (laughs) Do you really do that? Do you really make that joke? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm like not offended. <laughs> not offended. Really not. Nice. I think, uh, I don't know. It was just interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's about a 40-year-old woman mm-hmm. um, who wants to go back to a, a passion she had for rapping. And there's just something that I think, uh, I will, I don't know. I don't think I've seen that before in a movie. So That is weird. That's a great concept. Yeah. And it says it's shot in black and white, too. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. I okay. This is one that I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Yeah. Um. Because I'm not gonna see it. <laughs> but because I'm gonna be busy seeing my my most anticipated movie of this entire festival. Period. Period. Palm Springs. Really. By Max Barbacow. Let me hit you with some knowledge that Runner. people online know about me. Mm-hmm. I love romantic comedies. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Period. This is really the only romantic comedy playing at this festival. Mm. ID IDPR is, is the company that's going to be doing the PR for it, and I hit them up for everything. And you look at this cast up and down: Andy Samberg, Kristen Milioti, J.K. Simmons, Peter mm. Gallagher, Camille Mendez. This is a the type of picture that's right in my wheelhouse. Um, Jorma Tacone, mm-hmm. Akiba. The entire Lonely Island is producers on this thing. Yeah. So it's that, about wow. right. It's about this young sister who goes to a destination wedding and meets. Niles, who's one, uh, I guess she means Niles, who's a bad bridesmaid. Uh, Niles bails Sarah out of the wedding toast and realizes that they're not sentimental fools and that instead they prefer nihilism. Mm. Which sounds like nihilism. 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 You say aluminum, I say aluminium. It's the same word. Oh my God. I don't say that, but that's the example. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, Kristen Milioti, for people who don't know, was in a romantic comedy a few years ago. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. She's a lady from How I Met Your Mother. She is. She does play the mother in How I Met Your Mother. She was well. also in 30 Rock. She was in 30 she Rock? She was yeah. hilarious. She's hilarious in everything. She's actually quite brilliant. Yeah. And then, of course, She's Andy awesome. Samberg is... It's Andy Samberg. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why this is on my radar, and this is one that I will not be missing. Um, I cannot wait to see this thing. Um is it going pants. to be this decade's first great romantic comedy? Ooh. God, I only hope so. I forgot that this is the new decade. Isn't Keep forgetting. Weird? It's Isn't so weird. weird. You're like, this is another decade. It's yeah. so awkward. <laughs> right? And so, of those five movies, uh, which one is this one you're looking forward to the most? Um, Probably Shirley, just because uh, I recognize the cast yeah. the most. Um, But I don't know. I just like stuff that gets really mm-hmm. deep and gritty and psychological so kind of hoping that's where it leans to but yeah. i'm pretty open to edit everything yeah th- 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 i am, everything totally can either be really good or really really bad that's what we noticed about sundance is there's really no in between there's <laughs> mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. yeah films there there's, it's there's just not gone. eh. there's either that's awesome or that's a piece of shit movie it's not very good yeah mm. it's funny though because you have a, at least like seven or 18 documentaries on there um <laughs> <laughs> seven or 18 you have about 18 documentaries on there, and I think I have mm. maybe one. Really? I think I only have, That's like, so one. That's so weird, though. That's so weird. No, I, I have already two. Ha- I already have a screener for uh, Whirly Bird, though. Oh, really? Yeah. No, check that. Go watch that, and then let me know if it's any good. No, I have two. I'm sorry. I have two documentaries on here, and they're none of the two that you have on there. Really? So we'll talk about both. There's so many. I think uh, the documentaries for... are Sundance's strongest yeah. suit, because there's so 
many crazy things yeah. going on that we don't even know about. Technically, I have three, and I'll go into it. So hit mm-hmm. us up with what, what Whirly Bird's about since you're going to watch it. Okay, so uh, Whirly Bird is about this couple, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I believe they go around filming stuff. They're like journalists. Yeah. Um, and it's just about them and the relationship as uh, they go through their work together, and it just sounded really interesting. Pretty sure you nailed that, yeah. Yeah, nice. especially as someone who is dating someone who is also in the same industry as me. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just felt like I could kind of relate to it somehow, so I'd like to see how that works. Shout out to the homie Landon. I never met him. Right. So <laughs> I noticed that so. this next film, it looks really interesting, the one you have on your documentary list here. Mm-hmm. And can you tell us about why you're excited about this? Um, I'm just, uh, interested because, uh, a while back I saw this film called, this documentary called, uh, Call Her Gonda. Oh, that's a great documentary. Mm-hmm. I saw that, you saw that, and, uh, I sent that to you. You saw yes. it, you, yeah, the director shouted you out. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. Well, shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to him. Beautiful, beautiful documentary. Yeah. Um, absolutely heartbreaking. I think everyone needs to watch it. Yeah. Because it's so, it's, it's just really horrible how things are being mandated over there with the military. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, it's I'm just, uh, it is my fault. But I'm just really interested in um, hearing how things mm-hmm. are going in general with the Philippines because I also have a Filipino lineage. So yeah. that's also what attracts me. But as far as like the politics and just all the stuff that's going on over there. I think it's interesting to note the uh, very similar political landscapes in presidencies to Duterte's and Trump's presidencies Mm -hmm. the lack of empathy for anybody yeah is prevalent in both of them and i think that that's a very very interesting dynamic and so i look forward to seeing what you think about that movie. yeah what's the uh what's some of the other ones you got on um i have coded bias which sounds like that sounds so cool yeah i read about technology stuff it's about how uh face id and phones that unlock with your face don't read darker skin right Mm. and how it was discovered Mm -hmm. yeah that sounds really cool yeah and then uh i also have crip camp which is about a a camp for uh disabled people and here um, i thought it was about a camp full of a bunch of gangbangers could be (laughs) could work out that way it's not (laughs) it'd be cooler if it was yeah but uh, it just sounded really what interesting. Else you got on there? Uh, Dick Johnson is dead. A memoriam that the filmmaker made to her uh, father. It's supposed to be really emotional. Um, this is the second time funny. in two years that a Dick has died in Sundance. <laughs> I know. Dick Long died last year, and Johnson's dying this year. <laughs> oh no, Dick Johnson and Dick Long. Oh boy. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But this is a this is an actual real thing. Yeah, yeah. No horse is allowed. Next, uh, I have feels good man. It's yeah. about the uh, the creation, the the conception of Pepe the Frog. Pepe the Frog. <laughs> Pepe the Frog. Um. So of course I'm gonna watch that. Um. Spaceship Earth, which uh, I've heard about the uh, the incident. That had uh, happened um, cool. on a podcast, and it sounds terrifying. Yeah. So, gonna watch that. Um, and then Welcome to Chechnya. I forget what that's about. It's uh, about two activists risking peril in Chechnya, which is a war torn area of the world and has been since about the 90s. It's not so bad anymore because now a lot of the countries are broken up mm. into their own countries. I only have three documentaries on my list. Mm-hmm. The first one and most important one is by Baunwen. It's called Be Water, and it's about Bruce Lee. Period. That's all you need to know. <laughs> uh, Bloody Nose and Empty Pockets is takes place here in Las Vegas. Yeah, I did and consider it, but I was living like, in Las Vegas, that one's kind of cool. Yeah. And then for me, growing up Latino uh, and watching Noticias every day, mucho mucho amor about the astrologist and psychic Walter Mercado. This mm. one is gonna be cool. And every single day watching the the news with my dad, he would come on and read your <laughs> horoscope for you. That's crazy. And this guy was non. And he used to wear like the most glorious robe. He looks like Liberace. He is very Liberace ish <laughs> figure, especially in the in the Latin world. Mm. Uh, everybody's abuelita loves this guy. Mm. Um, and they made a documentary, and I can't wait to see it. Um, actually, there's one uh, documentary short I really want you to check out, and it's the Narcissist short. I have a screener for that. So 
the, so the next the next section that we have is the world cinema dramatic competition, which I don't care about. So um, I have three movies from that. Yeah, what'd you have? I'm surprised you don't care about. I don't the one? really like. I didn't really look at what was in here. Honestly, I'll be honest really? with you. I didn't really. So look. you didn't look at Possessor. <laughs> no, I had seen it, but it, no, I'm not gonna see that. Really? <laughs> it looks cool. I mean, it it's uh, well, Brandon Cronenberg definitely. I I I started watching what what's called his first movie this is that cronenberg yeah mm-hmm. son yeah um his first movie which i thought was okay yeah it wasn't interesting enough for me to finish it and not fall asleep yeah yeah <laughs> but um it's got mandy in it oh yeah yeah it does she's in two movies this year actually. yeah she's yeah in she's in another killing one. it uh, a- andrew brasbrook who guess what mm-hmm. we interviewed as well for mm-hmm. nancy you interviewed she's wonderful by the way yeah she's a very lovely lady yeah um check that out on our youtube channel yeah, but Possessor looks fun. She's also in Luxor, which is right next to it. Bada That's her right there. Yeah. So she's in two of these international films. Okay, I did see Luxor, and I think it's on my schedule, actually. Oh, well, there you go. On accident. You do care. I accidentally put a one on there. <laughs> what um, about Z- Jumbo? This looks cool. I, um, uh, so I, I think I translated the summary in my own way, in mm-hmm. my head. Yeah. Because to me, it sounded kind of like paraphilia, like, a lady falls in love with. Uh, you just spoke in a, a different thing. language to me. Paraphilia. Uh, so, have you ever heard of the film Crash by David Cronenberg? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. That's paraphilia. Oh, is wow. having when an you affinity. get off at car crashes. Um, when you have an affinity for something that's outside, quote unquote, the normal, you know, sexual behavior. What's normal? I don't know. I don't know. It's twenty twenty. <laughs> okay, What's normal? Okay. Okay. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> you better include that. I am. <laughs> Okay. I'm never cutting that. <laughs> Next, we have the documentary, uh, I guess, premiere? Yes. World, oh, World, World Cinema. Documentary, yeah. World Cinema documentary. Wow, you skipped all those premieres. Let's go to the premieres because okay. I have that up. Let's go there. Um, I have a couple I want to talk about because I'm going to one of them. Yeah. Right oh, wait. There. Premieres? I wrote documentary. Pre- oh, I didn't highlight it. I know. Okay. <laughs> so, the first one on yours is the movie The Next. The Nest. Is that what it's called? Yes. Oh, that looks cool. That's the Jew Law one. Mm-hmm. That looks like a cool movie. Yeah. It and looks cute. I can't wait to see that. It looks cute. Yeah. Yeah. And you also have the father on here. The father. The, the father. The father. Where is exactly. it? That's the Anthony Hopkins one. Yeah. 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 And that I was like, looks Aw. cool right there. And, and uh, Olivia Coleman. Yes. She's also in this movie. Yeah, so she I'm plays like, his daughter of the yeah, father. How can I not see it? She's so. the f- mother. She's the daughter of the father. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lost Girls. You also have on there. Um, is that what it says? Yeah. Oh yes, based on the true crime novel. Yes. Okay, yeah. that one looks good. Yeah. That's Amy. Um, Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan. I love her. She is a great actress. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, she seems really cool in person. And story. then you have Promising Young Woman, mm-hmm. which I actually already have a ticket for, and I'm going to see. Look out for our interview with the director mm-hmm. of Promising Young Woman. Ooh, hype. Um, I can't wait to see this movie. This is one I would was I had on my calendar, mm-hmm. um, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Uh, Kajillionaire, also, not one that was on my radar, but Miranda July is weird, so yeah. you're really going to like it. Like, uh, you, me, and everyone Woods we know is it. good. I don't mm-hmm. like her other movie, though. Mm. The Future? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's called The Future. Mm. Her and Hamish Link, uh, Linkletter. Hamish Linkletter, is that his name? I don't know. The hipster guy. Blink later? I don't know. The hipster guy. Okay. Um, it's a weird movie. I like you, me, and everyone we know, though. That's great. But mm-hmm. I can't wait to see Kajillion there. If you get a chance to see it, if you yeah. tell me it's Ooh, good, I'll Four Good it Days. That's Glenn Close. Yeah. And that's yes, the other is. one on here. Yes, it is. And Mila. Mila Kunis. And it sounded cool. really... I I, can, I feel like I, I know where it's going to end up going. But, but it's going to be a good ride. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's going to be sad. It's going to be punchy. You also punchy. have Horse Girl. Yeah. And this looks like a really interesting movie, too. Yeah. I'm really excited for this. Um, there's a couple that I have. I'm actually going to the downhill um, premiere. Mm, yeah. And I'm worried about it. It's a remake. Of Force, Is it it's really? A Force, it's a remake of Force Majeure. The Scandinavian oh. film. Um, and I'm worried about that. When was the original 2016, release? 2015. Really? It's a Swedish film. Yeah. Swedish, Danish. Hmm. I also I'm looking forward to uh, Dream Dream Horse as well because I love Tony Collette. Yeah, and for sure. Falling interests me because Viggo Mortensen wrote it. Oh, he wrote and it. He's directing it. Yeah. He drew. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see that. Damn. 
Yeah, I'm really interested yeah. in that. I one. was considering. And then I'm yeah, also interested in Tesla it. because I, I fucking love Ethan Hawke. <laughs> yeah. I just love Ethan Hawke. Yeah. And then I'm really interested in Dee Reese's new film because I thought mm-hmm. I think she's I think she's brilliant. Yeah. So I definitely am going to. There's a lot of really one. cool movies playing in the premieres section uh, mm-hmm. of Sundance, and I'm really excited to see them. Yeah. Honestly, um, what do you have for the next section? Uh, world cinema documentary competition. Right. I don't think I have anything on here. <laughs> Again, I'm not the documentary person. Shy handles other documentaries because I don't know what the hell I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. I mean, it's also the kind of thing I didn't think I would be as big of a documentary person, but that's what, you know, material I'm given to work with. But it also and tends it, to work for you. Yeah. I, I really, you know, there are a lot of movies that I watch where I'm just like, why isn't this a documentary, you know, based on true events, based on a true story. Well, then why don't you just tell the true story? And typically they do, and then it's really good, and then they ruin it by making it a narrative. Exactly. That's um, usually what happens. But yeah, I'm uh, looking at the Truffle Hunters. That sounds adorable because it's about... Um, Is it about puppies? It's about some puppies, I think. Um, yes. So there are these people and their dogs, and they, they hunt truffle. And that's basically it. Yeah, but they've got to be British. Uh, I don't know. British people hunt truffle. Italy. Northern Italy. That's good enough. Mm-hmm. Good enough. Okay. It's good. Um, the, Top of the boot, whatever. Yeah. The reason I jump. I'm also uh, looking forward to the painter and the thief, which is about uh, a painter. Yeah. And then a, uh, well, a thief, but he uh, he ended up stealing some artwork, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Some big artwork. So that sounds interesting. The That's mole interesting. agent. The mole agent about this guy who's a. Uh, He's like a private investigator, I think. Chilean spy. Attack. But he's also 83 years old. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, dude, um, that's so cool dude, sounding. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta get that aging technology on him. Right. Dude, God, that's he's, cool. He's 35 years old. I swear. That's so cool. The, I love. That. I love how that sounds. Yeah, the Earth is blue as an orange. I'm also looking forward to. What a weird title. I know. That's what attracted me. The to Earth it. is blue as an orange. It gives you an image, doesn't it? Yeah. Like you're trying to like think about it. Yeah, that's orange is the new blue apparently. <laughs> oh. Orange is the new blue. I don't like that. Me neither. Um Saudi runaway. Yeah, that, that's um, pretty self-explanatory that. Time, yeah. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. Into yeah. the deep. Um it's about murder for some reason, so which this, this I'm is all this about. year's uh Cold Case Hamish Gold, mm. which came out last year. So mm-hmm. uh, last year's Sunday Film Festival and it was about Swedish people getting murdered. Nice. Oh my! A lot of Swedish people getting murdered. Yeah. yeah. Rip. Mysterious. Yeah. Rip. And then uh, lastly, influence. Ooh. Um, I think it's just namely about media. Oh. Okay. And how media is used to manipulate people. Okay. So, that's what I get from uh, the uh, the context we're given. It's a very limited context. If you go on the Sundance website, you get like nothing. Nothing. A still. <laughs> Like two yeah. stills at best, yeah. and then a really general, really soft summary. It's basically like a here's what this movie about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind your of. next section you have is a special events, right? Yeah, I don't have anything from here because I don't care about any of this. Um, McMillian sounds interesting. I love to hear about that McDonald's. Like a weird story. <laughs> the Monopoly thing. Yeah, they got they got hacked. Oh, that Hillary thing looks cool. Eh. It just looks long though. Yeah. And I don't like hearing about those things. Yeah. I don't like hearing about politicians for that long. I, I do. I I can't do that. Um there's uh there's this one called Love Fraud guy who uh makes women fall in love with him and then he steals everything from them, basically. I think I just found my next job. Great. But okay. it's about them going in for revenge. Oh. I don't care about that. <laughs> that's the best part. That's the best part. <laughs> um, and then the trade, which I forget what that's about. Where is it? Yeah, it's right there. Uh, Matthew Heineman, who did Cartel Land. Is... Oh, yeah. I think that's why I did it, because I was like, Cartel Land's cool. So. Cartel Land was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the new Frontier stuff that you're going to go see too, right? Hopefully. I uh, unfortunately didn't get to make it to any of the new Frontier stuff last year. because they put it all in the same place. You think? Well, it's yeah. It's all done in the same theater, and I don't really feel like going over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it I is. Just don't. It's it's like next to the holiday, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. Some of it sounded interesting. Um, namely two things: a machine for viewing. Yeah. And Vitalina Varela, which 
I really still have no idea what they're about. That's okay. You don't need to go and know anything about the new frontier stuff. Just enjoy it. Exactly. So it's supposed to be like you experience it in a like in a deeper sense, like it's interactive, or yeah. it's supposed to play with more of your senses mm-hmm. or whatever. So yeah, I implore that. Now, it's cool. the shorts we're not going to really go into because you've already seen, like, 90% of the ones you wanted to see. I've seen, like, 70%. Yeah, and um, <laughs> that's going to be up soon, guys. Yeah. Huge That'll shout probably... out to uh, the filmmakers and the publicists and the producers who are letting me see these films early. Yeah. I, uh, thank you. Will anything beat Hot Dog? Yeah. Because Hot Dog from last year's Sunday I think, uh, was perfect, perfect film. Match video. or... I don't know. Bridge. I've I've seen I've seen some pretty good ones. I've seen some pretty eh. I'll end up in ones. jail. Sounded cool. Yeah. That sounded super cool. That was a good one. That was a good one. What's yeah. the next section you have there? The next like section. Shirts? No, I mean, what is the uh, what is the next? Midnight. Section? Oh yeah, this is your Ooh. bread and butter right here. It is. So I have I think I have every single movie from the midnight section category right uh, in my list. Uh, well then, let's start from the top. Amulet by <laughs> Rama Lagarai. It's her directorial debut, actress mm-hmm. Romo Garai. Um, I don't care what it's about. It looks really fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was a little bit iffy on it because yeah. it's named Amulet. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's that, about an amulet. It sounds wow. pretentious. Treasure. But um, looking at it, looking at the still, the one still. <laughs> the one still that they keep putting around. I don't know. I just think, you know, why not? With midnight movies, you're never really to sure. To be fair, the next film only has one still as well, but uh, there's one thing about this film that no other midnight movie has going for it. Mm. Justin Simeon, mm. whose debut feature, Dear White People, is oh, fucking awesome. Yeah. And that's Bad Hair. It takes place in 1989. Yeah. And I cannot wait for this movie. It it's sounds the, crazy. Legitimately, it's the first movie I got tickets to. Nice. Um, it's playing the, the day we get there at 8 p.m., so yeah. <laughs> we're going. Fun fact, it is one out of two bad hairs that are showing at Sundance. What's the other one? It's a short about a guy who has like really bad, a really bad hair situation. <laughs> I'm really mad that it, it's not about a... I think I have a screener for that, too. I'm really bit mad it's not about a, a bunny that goes around like the, like the uh, old Calvin oh, and Hobbes thing. Just the bad everything. hair. Yeah. Uh-huh, good. Good. I didn't look at his house. What's that about? Um, I don't know. It just sounds creepy. Yeah. Oh, it's about, oh, so I thought it was interesting because it, it's about like what happens after these refugees mm-hmm. settle in a new place and they have a, a mm-hmm. really difficult time acclimating for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And that sounds terrifying. So sure. That does sound terrifying. Yeah. Impedigor. What a sweet title. What yeah. That right. About? Um, it sounds, I mean, no, never mind. I don't want to compare anything to hereditary, but in the sense yeah, you can't like, do that. Con- I know, but like conceptually, mm-hmm. it sounds like it has something to do with like um her her ancestry or something, the main character mm-hmm. and and why things are happening to her and then there's some big twist or secret or whatever to why things are happening to her. A quick, a quick aside about hereditary. If you guys don't know who our friend Rob is, he's the guy who <laughs> painted in hereditary. Did he? Yeah, at South by or Tiff. He I painted think, at the screen. I think that's fair. I think that's yeah. fair. Mm-hmm. It's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next film we're going. I'm actually going. We're going to the premiere. Well, I'm going. Mm-hmm. You're going, but I'm going to the premiere. Mm-hmm. It's Relic, which okay. stars the lovely and talented Emily Mortimer. I love her. She's a fantastic actress. Yeah. Um, I, that's the only reason I wanted to see it. Honestly, yeah. she's in it. Yeah. And it's about an old lady. Fair enough. <laughs> old ladies are scary now. They're very scary. <laughs> uh, then the next one is. Oh uh, wait, have you heard of um, what is it? Um, Deborah Logan, the something of the Deborah haunting Logan. of Deborah Logan, something like that. That's a pretty sweet movie. Yeah, a weird old lady. Go watch that if you want to see a good found footage movie with crazy special effects and cool old ladies. Really uh, cool old ladies. And... Run, sweetheart, run. I don't know anything about this one. Um, I think it's gonna be a whatever movie, but I'm gonna yeah. watch it anyway. <laughs> uh, the next one I'm really excited for. Scare me. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited about this one. Sounds fun. Yeah. Josh Rubin's in it. He directs it. He writes it. He stars in it. It's a, it's 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 his film basically. He's in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait for this thing. It looks great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next one is the Night House, which has Rebecca Hall. So um, she wasn't. She was Christine, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Looks talented like actress. Rebecca Hall is so talented. Mm-hmm. And she's in the gift. Mm, I didn't watch that. I did. You don't like it. And sure. then the sure. last film in the midnight category it has only one name that interests me, and I Saint really Vincent. Care. That's it. That's I, why I want to see this movie. Yeah, that's why I want to Because Annie see Clark is in this movie. Yeah. And I love St. Vincent. It's very strange. Yeah. Well, Carrie Brownstein's in it, too, but... Yeah. It's going to be weird, and I want to see it. I can't wait to see how weird exactly. it is. Exactly. 
Let's get weird, guys. Yay. What is the next section? Um, Ironically named. Next. Next. All right, next. So I'm going to let next. you talk about one, two, three, four, five movies you have there because I think you have a similar five to me. Okay. So we'll discuss that. We so. do. Um, so the first one we have on there is Summertime. Mm -hmm. No, not the Will Smith Jam. <laughs> no, this one takes place over the course of uh, yeah. a hot day. Yeah, it uh, it sounds kind of similar to like how mm -hmm. Crash is formatted, where it just um or goes Babel. over hmm? or Babel. Yeah, yeah. Which I is thought better. it was Babel. No, it's Babel. Oh, okay. But again, that's weird. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> but um, basically, it, it it covers all these different characters mm -hmm. and uh, their lives intersect in some fashion. Now so. the next section was a uh, uh, particular section of Sundance that didn't impress me last year. A lot of the ones that I thought were going to be good just didn't impress me last year within the next section. Mm -hmm. Sailor in the Spades, and Premature mm -hmm. was in there. Uh, what was that other one with Jim Gaffigan? Oh. <laughs> that one Something wasn't good either. Something light. Stinker. Yeah. Light from light. Mm, also, a stinker. Yeah. So the, the next section really has some making up to do, but I'll tell you one of the films when we get to it, the one I'm really excited for out of this section. Uh, next we have Spree by Eugene uh, Kolturenko. That looks fun. It does look fun. Yeah. You're not the kid from Stranger Things? Yes, it is. Which is He's not why I'm the best character from Stranger Things. I have not watched past the first episode of Stranger Things. No, you should. It's great. Mm, you okay. should. It's great. He's the best character in the show. Okay. He is. Cool. I wouldn't like you. <laughs> um, so Spree's cool. Mm -hmm. Beast Beast. This movie looks awesome. Yeah. This movie looks awesome. It's about a theater kid um, uh, who falls in love with it. It's like a love story. Um, it looks like what Premature wanted to be. Mm. But it looks better than that. Yeah. So the next two movies are the two that I'm most excited for. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna do this one last? Yes. Because that I that's the one that I'm anticipating. There's the only most. one name I need to know to go mm -hmm. see this movie. Exactly. And it's that one right there. Yeah. So the one that the other one I'm really excited for, and here's the thing you may not know about this movie that we're about to talk about. Mm -hmm. I interviewed the director of it. Yeah. Robert Machoian. What did he do? Uh, he did a movie here that debuted at the at the Las Vegas Film Festival two years ago. When she runs. Mm. which was about a runner. And Robert Runchillian was one of the directors on that movie. And I, I interviewed him. Check it out on the YouTube channel right now. Um, and the movie he has coming to Sundance 2020 is called The Killing of Two Lovers. Which is quite a title. You better impress with a title like that. And mm -hmm. if this thing looks as good as When She Runs did, mm -hmm. from a cinematography perspective and just uh, simplicity of story, this is going to be a, a secret killer right here. Yeah. This is going to be a fantastic movie. It sounds sad, so I like it. Yeah, Robert, if you're listening, <laughs> which you are not, but if you are, hit us up again when we're there, and we'd love to talk to you again, man. It was, it was awesome having you last time. Um, right. There's only one movie that's not on your list that's on mine. Oh, okay. Uh, the next one we'll talk about is uh, on my list and not on yours. Omniboat, A Fast Boat Fantasia, and it's strictly because it's directed by the Daniels. It is? Oh, shit. It just says Daniels. That's them, the Daniels. The Daniels. Mm -hmm. If it said the Daniels, as in then I would have Swiss Army it. Man and the Death of Dick Long Daniels. Well, that was only one Daniel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there was counts. half a Daniel, this half is, the Daniels. Yeah, well, they got their other half back for Omniboat, <laughs> a fast boat Fantasia. Damn. I cannot wait through this ridiculousness. Jim Cummings is in to it. Hit my screen. Yeah, Jim Cummings follows us on Twitter. Really? He does. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to Jim. Shout Cummings. out to Jim you Cummings. You are the man, dude. Yay. Love you, dude. <laughs> Cool. Tell, tell people to follow us on Twitter, bro. Yeah. I love you, man. Wait, Celia Rolson Hall is in it? Yeah, this thing is <gasps> stacked, bro. Wow. So this thing is weird. Uh, Phil Lord is also in it. <laughs> they all wrote That's part of this crazy. movie. Wow. This movie's weird. I, I'm so excited for Celia, that Celia Rolson Hall. I'm pretty sure it, you didn't have this on your radar, but now you do. I do now, because I read the summary, yeah. and I was just like, there's just static in my head. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. See? <laughs> just kidding Ooh. so our last movie is the one that we're both very excited for mm -hmm. for the next most anticipated and all I need to say is Aubrey Plaza I love you so much exactly <laughs> and then uh, the other guy what is this guy's name I forgot his name um, I he, think it starts with a C but he yeah, I Chris, love him it's a Chris something yeah. but he's a Chris and he's really good yeah. he's a great actor and um, it's good. called Black Bear mm -hmm. and it takes place in the Adirondacks and this movie looks like it's going to be it the best movie. I didn't even is. read the summary, honestly. I didn't need to, but I knew what, I knew what it was about. Yeah, I yeah. I just see their two faces, and I love both of these actors. Yes. Like they're yes. they're so talented, and um, I just like watching them. 
I just think they're both very, very talented. Yeah, and I'd love to see them like work yeah. with each other and against each other and see how that Christopher works out. Abbott, that's his name. Yeah. And I look forward to this because um, Aubrey Plaza is in it, and I love her. Mm-hmm. And she truth. Is, even even when she's not in a good movie, I think she's good. Like she's yeah. not like Bad Grandpa's a bad movie. Yeah. Which is funny. Yeah. Child's Play is a bad movie, but she's good in it. It was okay. And then uh, Life After Beth. Not a great movie, but she's brilliant in it. it she makes it a really good movie. She does. That's, That's a what cute movie. she does. Yeah. She she makes she's everything a higher she's in level there. actor. She definitely. elevates everything that she's in. Yeah. And anybody who's seen Always Shine, mm-hmm. uh, if you like that, the director uh, Lawrence Michael Levin is doing this, and it's going to be and Wild Canaries. I'm just not going to go to the first screening because it's at the library. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the and library. there's the Red Stone. We may have to go to the library. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's the Park Avenue. The Mark. There you go. We'll go to that. Oh, one. the Mark. Yeah. The Mark is good. I like the Mark. Mm-hmm. And so that was the, that was the next section. And then lastly, there's Spotlight. Yeah. Spotlight. I, Spotlight's a good movie. Spotlight. Spotlight is a good movie. It's a very good movie. Yay, molestation! If you don't, if you don't like, if you don't know how much <laughs> I like Spotlight, you should check out our brand new video that came up on our YouTube channel. That talks about all Best Picture nominees from the last decade, ranked from eighty-eight to one. Spoiler alert, number 88 and the worst n- nominee was Bohemian Rhapsody. Sucks. Thanks. This is my most anticipated movie from this entire thing. Emma. Emma. This and this. These are the two I wanted to see. Yeah, the assistant. Dude, you're in my head right now, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude. And then we danced. I also want to see I that. Yeah. And then we danced is a music box uh, movie. Um, so I might just reach out to move music, music box. box. Yeah, that's the. Oh, the just, okay. I thought you were so trying to I say. I may reach play. out and see if they'll just send me a copy of that one. That would be awesome. Yeah. I did, well, I did, so all the movies that I have listed since I went through Sundance, the Sundance program with Fine Tune Comb, I emailed every single email that they had available for all of the films that I wanted to see. So I'm still waiting to hear back from every single one of them. I'll talk, I'll talk to Music Box about that one. For okay. Us. Yeah. Um, but the other two movies they have on here that aren't, and then we danced, are the two movies that I'm looking most forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love Julia Gardner. Yeah. She's, the assist, the she's lovely. And There's I, just something about her. She's very... I can't wait to see this. Yeah. She's very magnetic. She is. She's great in Ozark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the, the thing that draws me to Emma is the director. Mm. Pablo Lorraine, who did um, he, Jackie a few years ago. Jackie. Oh, Natalie Portman. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'm the one I have left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, there it is. Any didn't yeah. know, which is a great movie. Yeah. If you haven't seen No. Interesting. Yeah, it's a great I movie. have not. It's great. I should see it. Yeah, you should. <laughs> uh, it's fantastic. I, and Gael Garcia Bernal is in it. Oh. And I love Gael Garcia Bernal. Yeah. He's also in No. Yeah. <laughs> um, Interesting. I used to get told I look like him. I don't believe it. So, those are the movies we have listed. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a very long oh, list. Oh, shit. Wait, I missed one. You missed one. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Yes. Okay. So that guy's a creep, though. I know. That's why I want to watch it. <laughs> that documentary looks awesome. I love Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Landon cool. really introduced me to Ren and Stimpy, and I was like, this That's is right, really because cool she's show. a fetus. I forgot. It's amazing animation, though. Oh, it really is. And it's not for kids. What is it? Buttered Toast Man? That was my yeah, guy, dude. Toast <laughs> that was my guy, dude. Buttered Toast Man's amazing. Um, I love Ren and Stimpy, so I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like adult party cartoons. That's not very good. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoy that that film. and um, the, I really enjoy what that film's going to look like. Hopefully, we'll get to catch it. Mm-hmm. That's a good doc. It looks like a good doc. Yeah. I just, what I worry about is that we're going to be seeing the same movie. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad thing. No, 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 because then we get two perspectives, and then we can. Do it's a, not like we're paying for it. No, and then we can, <laughs> see, but, and then we can see a uh, get a consensus grade out of it. Yeah. But what it also does is it targets our films, and maybe we have better experiences here because now we're seeing targeted films. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the other thing look I look for. I kind of want to see Miss America on it too. I don't care about it. So. Uh, there's a Taylor Swift documentary playing, ladies and gentlemen. And I kind of <laughs> want to see it. You like oh, Miss America? You like Taylor Swift? I'm not particularly plussed about it, but I just want to see what they do with it. Interesting. I want to see if they they kiss her ass or not. I think they're gonna kiss her ass. This not is, necessarily a bad thing. It's just not my jam. I just don't know because it's Sundance, and they usually don't pull a lot of punches mm-hmm. when it comes to that sort of thing. They literally played Hail Satan. I don't know. 
I'm mm-hmm. iffy about it. We'll see. I think I, I don't it's think whatever. I finished that one. I think I was like, well, if I get in, I do. If I don't, I don't. And then there's two movies that are TBA screenings. We don't know what they are. Yeah. I have tickets both. Really? Mm-hmm. Ooh, mystery. Mm-hmm. Is one of them uh, a documentary? No. Oh, no, really? Interesting. Last year, neither one was a documentary hmm. either. Mystery. The first one was Velvet Buzzsaw. Really? And the other one was uh, Fighting With My Family, which was awesome, by the way. Mm. Do you love Florence? We do love Florence Pugh. We stand with Florence She's in, Pugh. what, three movies this year? Three movies in 2019? She was in Midsommar, Fighting With My Family, and Little Women. Yeah. She was good in two of them. Well, I, is, she has had to be in more than that. Well, she was also in... But um, she's, this is definitely... Well, last year was definitely yeah. her year. That's when I... Uh, she was in another movie, uh, Period Piece, as well. Period Piece. Let me look um, it up. She's gorgeous. Um, the Falling. Lady Macbeth. There it is. Lady Macbeth. Oh. Yeah. I knew that was... And she was I always wanted to see Lady Macbeth. It's very boring, but pretty good. Oh. Lady Macbeth. Lady Macbeth. So the Scottish it, one. It's pretty much all we're waiting for. The Mac. Oh yeah, so uh, I have an article coming out soon. As soon as I finish all of the shorts that I've been being sent, and uh, I'm still being sent more screeners and stuff. So uh, look forward to that. Probably dropping it as soon as Monday passes. We're also revamping our YouTube channel, and we're dropping our first video of the revamp, and mm-hmm. it's going to be our the best anim- foreign animated films. Is that correct? The best international animated films. I swear to God, it perfectly was not. It's not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's all, it's just gonna only be each guy. <laughs> we got pranked. It's just only gonna be his movies, and I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Just, it, it's just like a three second video. It's just like Satoshi Khan. That's all. Flashing on the screen. Uh, I just want to set the parameters that we did not include Studio Ghibli or Disney films in this. Is that correct? No, I, I included Ghibli. You did? Because they're awesome. they're foreign films. Uh, even a, though even though they're distributed by Disney. You could legitimately take a top ten of just Ghibli. Like, but I don't know if I have a top ten. I don't think I do. <laughs> I need to Speaking be doing which, some you more know research. I have the original cut of uh, My Neighbor Totoro. The original? What does that mean? That means it doesn't have the L fanning and Dakota fanning on. Oh, uh, so over. just... It's dubbed over by other American actresses. Really? That way. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. It's funny though, my mom, speaking of remastered or original versions, my mom has been ranting all her life about having two copies of the remastered uh, Last Unicorn DVD. Nobody wants to see the remastered. And she spent, exactly, it's so bad. Yeah, it's bad. The voices sound horrible. I know, I know. And she spent $18 on accident on, the, on, a, on an original copy, but she doesn't know how to use eBay. Dear God. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, let me help you. So this is where we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. We're going to do an intro. So thank you guys for joining us for this very long debut podcast. Uh, we talked about a lot of stuff. We mm-hmm. laughed. We cried. Mainly I cried. Um, probably thinking about Joaquin Phoenix and her mm. again. Again. Uh, On the daily. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, if you want to check us, check out our reviews, filmsnobreviews.com, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at, uh, at filmsnobreviews.com. You can check me out. Shai Simone? Where can they find you on the webs? Um, you can find me on Facebook. Don't follow me. I do not post things that are, are work friendly. You might need to cut or that you, out. Or you should follow. Her. Um, I also have an art Instagram. I'm gonna plug that at Red Shoes Art Blues. Um, I'm also on Letterbox one. now. I have one follower and two re- movies reviewed because I have to move everything from IMDb because I'm old fashioned. You have two followers. I just followed you the other day. I thought you were my first follower. No, uh, Chase is your first follower. Really? Chase grows up. Oh, corset. Whatever. My baby boy. Yeah, basically just follow my work on uh, Film Snob Reviews. That's where I do a majority of things. And if you want to help the site, we've got a Patreon. Patreon.com. Oh my Film gosh, Snob please Reviews. get on our Patreon. What are the perks if you make So $1, $1 dollar, you just get the luxury of giving us money. $5, you get the luxury of just giving us $5. But also, you get the you get, you get get the ability to receive notes, any notes I make for the month. You get mm-hmm. a copy of those. Mm-hmm. Basically, you get a stream of conscience from my insanity. I- for $10, we'll actually review any movie you ask us to. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are locked. So uh, if you go to the website and you request a review, if you're not a $10 follower or not, you won't, you won't get to see the review. $20, you get a, you get a Film Snob t-shirt of your choice from the website and then every other perk, including... Film, custom film review, mm-hmm. and then fifty dollars you get to be my best friend. Holla! Like you get to legit be my best friend. Uh, you get all the other perks. Too. You get the T-shirt. Um, you also get 
your name in the credits of every single video mm-hmm. of, that we make and a shout out on any podcast that we make coming after this. Um, as we get more Patreons, we'll shout you guys out at the beginning of every video. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be doing a, a lot more work, mm-hmm. covering a lot more platforms this year. Look out for our top 10 best of the year. We're not going to do a worst of the year because we already told you what the worst movie of the year is. There's too many horrible movies to yeah. make just 10. Of which 10. Wounds is the biggest one of them all. <laughs> It's wor- it's the worst. It's thing. <laughs> well, it, it's the worst thing. Yeah, it's 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 it's, bad. it's one of the bigger evils. It literally wounds you. That's why it's called that. It hurts. It's bad. Um, but we're gonna be doing a top ten best. I look forward to seeing how your list matches up after you get caught up mm-hmm. to mine. We're gonna be shooting that mo- that particular video live from from Park City. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll be really fun for you. Hopefully, guys to that's see. what it doesn't get deleted again. We're gonna do audio, <laughs> and you're gonna make all the footage. Yeah. On your premiere. Yeah. Um, so if you if you like what you hear and you had a good time, give us a follow on, on YouTube as well. Uh, once we get to 1,000 followers, we're going to do a 1,000 follower stream. Uh, I'm going to do that on Twitch, though. Um, follow us on Twitch, too. Twitch.com slash Twin Clown Review. Do it. Watch me be bad at video games. It's so fun. <laughs> Suck at them. Sophisticated. I'm too sophisticated for this bullshit. <laughs> I'm too sophisticated for this bullshit. <laughs> Uh, do that. Thank you guys for joining us. And for Film Snob Reviews, I'm William, and see you later.